All right, so this should be the last take. Hopefully in saying that it is, but because I've had a couple, I've ultimately stumbled over my words, but I'm gonna ignore that for now. And basically just go through on this try. So I guess uh, the first thing I'd like to uh, address before I get into uh, this video are the future videos or future video singular rank you'll say but video during like not just during like this winter break but in general will likely end up being my last miraculous slave like video if not it'll at least be the last one for season three but it's it's the one i've been talking about in my previous videos on whether or not i will really end up doing it or it, how it's basically up to my discrepancy and how i have an idea i want to touch on but i don't know how i'll make it into like a full-fledged video so i've I've basically come up with an idea, or I've more so, I've like figured out what I'll end up doing for the video, and the video, not this one, but the next one, it'll be a, it'll be a Miraculous Ladybug themes, because I know I mentioned that within my previous videos, and then for that video, ultimately, what I'll be doing is I'll touch upon the themes of the show, then I'll touch upon the main theme of season two, and how it's realized in the season finale, because obviously it's realized throughout the season, but it's really made apparent in the season finale. And then also the main theme of season three and how that's made apparent in the season finale. Because that's like for for the season two and three finales, the main themes of those seasons, they are made very apparent in the finale. So I was going to talk about instances in which that is so. So that'd be the first part of the video because I don't think that's enough to garner it like its own video. And then the second part of the video, it will be based... So the second part of the video, I actually got the idea for this just like thinking on my own. I sort of had a moment of realization. I was just like thinking about the show, not even watching it. Made more specifically about the season three finale. And I thought of a giant like, uh, basically a giant inconsistency within the season finale. Or it was basically, it, was a, it wasn't really an instance or an event, but it was one certain aspect of the battle where there's an implication from that like... How I already made my implications video and like mistake episodes video kind of like those where it would have a uh, implication on the season if it were fully realized so I'll talk more about then that then but um granted that the video the second part of the video that I was going to talk about it was basically how ultimately how Ladybug and Shannon Wise identities could be figured out within the show itself so not looking from an outside perspective on like analyzing specific character actions or whatnot it will be we'll specifically be looking at instances or events within the show that could ultimately lead that ladybug and shadow are already know or that they could realize that would ultimately lead them to figure out the identities of ours because ultimately it's not about well whether we figure it out or not it's ultimately about whether they figure it out so that's why i figure we'll take a look from their perspective and see how they could realize and I may even touch upon why they don't think uh, the other is or who they have suspected over time to be their superhero like partner who basically their civilian identity would be because they have suspected various people over time and ultimately how they ultimately or what, you saying what twice but ultimately how they would end up convincing themselves that's not them basically or and that would be in terms of like Adrian and Marinette as they are obviously their superhero identities but ultimately how they were able to deduce that the people who weren't uh, Ladybug and Chat Noir actually were not and then ultimately how they convinced themselves that the actual uh, superhero civilian counterpart is ultimately not the superhero so yeah because there were there were a couple episodes that touched on that in season three it was touched on in season two touched on in season three like lightly brushed over I'd say the episode that went to the most depth in terms of the potential for each of them figuring out their superhero identity was um, Kwame Buster, and that's actually, I will likely will talk about that, but uh, yeah, so besides that, it's pretty much just going to talk about how within the show, how they could figure out, or not even how they could figure out, because we know they won't, but basically the easiest way for them to figure out their superhero, or their partner's superhero identity. I wonder, hold on, I'm going to take a pause for a moment. Let's remember the time. 4.50. I want to see if I can hear this. All right. I just, because obviously, the, actually, the speaker is fairly good, so it can pick up a lot of sound. So I just wanted to know if it could hear that. Because I noticed there was some, like, 
noise in my other videos and I wasn't like fiddling around or whatnot, so I don't know what that would be. That was just my suspicion. But anyway, with that out of the way, um, I think we get into this video. I know what I'm doing for this video, so. Hmm. Alright, so this video is the follow-up video to my previous video, which is the Season 3 Mistakes video, which touched on the Season 3 Mistake episodes. I'm just going to list them out. I actually have, I mean, note cards. That you probably heard, but I mean, I can just like... Actually, I didn't make any. You know what? That's not even too bad because... No, wait, I did. All right, so the first mistake episode was episode 11, Oblivio. The second was episode 15, Feast. Third was episode 19, Time Tiger. Fourth was episode 22, Shot Blanc. And fifth was episode 23, Felix. And I basically went into detail about how those episodes were mistake episodes or more so why they were, except for Felix. I just basically said, like, that video is literally solely for fan service, so... But the complications from that, basically it was given that Felix kind of invalidates Lila's identity and it introduces like an aspect of the show we don't really need with like the whole family feud between Gabriel and Amele, not Amele's side of the family. But that's just basically a summary. And then the rest of the four, I went into great detail or like great depth about how there was a specific instant instance or event or in the case of Chat Blanc, the whole episode itself that had an implication that was ultimately detrimental to the series. So that's, this is a follow-up to that video because that video is ultimately like the first part in like this video. And this video is a more important video because uh, this video, I kind of have an idea of what I want to make for the title. But I mean, basically this video is basically how I think season three should have gone. Or I think I'll, the title will be something like season three, how it should have been. And it will basically be like, how I think it should have gone, or pretty much if I had resources to make the show, if I was like the one calling the shots, let's say I had like unlimited resources to make the show, it'd basically be how I would do it. Cause like, I can, obviously you can like criticize all you want, but without like offering your own opinion or your own like sort of what you, what you would do then that's sort of just like complaining without like a basis. So that's what this video is for. And the season three mistakes video will end to this one, like I said. But yeah, I'll get specifically into how, because I couldn't make this video without that. Like this video needs the season three mistakes because I'm going to first address the season three mistake episodes. That, that'll be the first part I'll address because I'll address it at the very beginning and then I'll bring it, I'll talk about it later. So yeah, given we've established that, all right. So now this video, I'll probably just put a timestamp here, just because that's, that's what I'm actually going to talk about. So, all right. So the three season three mistake episodes, I think they should either be, well, I guess now, given that it's over, I think they should be considered non-canon, basically for the reasons I mentioned in the previous video. I mean, obviously... I think Felix and Shot Blanc can be considered non-canon, like, without, like, an official word of approval, given, like, the nature of the episodes and that they're mainly, like, fan service, pretty much. But the other three episodes, which I actually have here, uh, no, I don't, apparently. The other three episodes, which are Oblivio Feast and Time Tiger, all of those have, they're all, like, development episodes, both story-wise and plot-related. But each of the main ramifications of those episodes, I guess Oblivio, not so much, but Feast basically bringing back the Temple of the Miraculous and the entirety of the Order of the Guardians, big ramification. And Time Tiger, ultimately, that the Hawk Moth of the Future is not Gabriel in the ramifications from that. I think ultimately, uh, ultimately they should just either be considered non-canon or should just be like cut from the show. I guess that's more so not how I would have done season three, but basically like what I think they should do about it. Because I mean, here's the thing. Knowing that Gabriel is not the Hawk Moth of the future, like unless they plan on going into the future timeline, that there's really no reason for that uh, development to have taken place because that doesn't affect the present like storyline. Because I mean, I've mentioned how it would affect Gabriel and that it might have him like it might force him to like cut his losses as opposed to continue acting as a uh, hawk moth given that he knows he'll lose but i mean he obviously didn't end up doing that so it had no real it, it had an impact 
but like it just it wasn't really it doesn't really affect the story like that's more so like it's more it's not a fan service thing entirely like Sean Blanc and Felix but it's more so just sort of to like stir up the pot basically to add another sort of dimension to the show and the conflict all, the ultimate conflict which will continue in the future we now know but uh yeah but it really doesn't affect the present day like current timeline like storyline so that's that and then uh feast yeah the just the introduction of the temple of the miraculous and the entirety of the order of the guardians despite that was episode 15 so there were 10 episodes after that there was no other mention of the temple of the miraculous or the order of the guardians like in the following 10 episodes from that despite having a supposedly huge impact on the series in terms of basically reviving the entire order as what we've seen prior to that was basically just the last like set of miraculous users going after it so obviously there's that in oblivio i still mention about how adrian and marin i'm not going to go into detail now simply because i did that in the season three of snake episodes video but basically how adrian and marinette could figure out their identity given some reasonable deduction and like logical assumptions given ultimately the photo that alia took of them in their final moments before they regained their memories so those are those three and those are what i think should happen to those because i'm not sure i specifically addressed what i think should be done with those episodes in the previous video the season three mistakes video i think i may I am just ended off the video like basically bashing the episode of Felix and saying that basically uh, it should have like not existed. But the, those are like the specific reasons why I think they should be like considered non-canon or just not a part of the season at all. Like just kind of that. Because I, I, that's why I needed to say like I needed to get that out of the way simply because I wasn't sure whether I brought up in the previous video. But yeah, now that that's out of the way, we can actually get into some theory craft. I'll, I'll actually put the time stamp it like 12 minutes just as that's when i'll actually that's when I, this is when i'm actually getting into the video like the title all right so just a moment all right so season three how i would have done it the reason why i talked about the season three mistake episodes is because that would be the first change i would have done for season three if i had control over it because we've already established that the entirety of the season is complete before even the first episode is released. So basically, and we've also established that the finale is done before any of like, before any of the release dates are made or before any of the, whether the completion of certain episodes or not are in fact publicized. So like they can't wait to see like, the reactions for season one and stuff like that in order to edit their finale as it's already finished so there's that so this is going like right at the end of season two actually what i did was i brought back my season three predictions note card for this is i'm going to go over those topics and basically how it would whether i think it played out well and ultimately how i would have played it out as ultimately this is mainly what this video is going off of like i said I will be bringing up, it's mainly the season three predictions video, like part two, because it's like how I would have done it, but I also want to keep it more in like a timeline, like more of a timeline perspective as opposed to an individual event perspective. So that's why I need to bring that up along with the season three mistake episode. So now onto the actual timeline. If, if I had complete control over season three, I would have just not made the mistake episodes with the mistake episodes being episode 11 oblivio episode 15 feast episode 19 time tiger episode 22 champ blanc and episode 23 felix i guess i shouldn't even say if i had control and i was making it post season two because i would have just done exactly what my season three predictions was but this is if let's say this is now looking back like more so what i think should have happened so not even necessarily if I had control, because I could have taken it in a complete different direction, but may, what I think should have happened. I'll keep it at that from now. Not necessarily if I had complete control over the production of the ep show and I had unlimited resources to do what I want. This is looking back what I think should have happened. So yeah, I think the mistake episode should have never been made. I went into enough detail on that and why they shouldn't have been made. So there's that. However, because we're looking at it from a timeline perspective, 
we are now at 20 episodes out of, or 21 episodes out of 26. So we need five more episodes to make. But before I go into what I think those episodes should be, what I'm going to do is go back to my season three predictions. I literally have the list right here and ultimately basically go through each one and talk about whether I thought they were done well or whether there could have been more development because that's ultimately what I'm doing this off of. But I'm doing it from more of a timeline perspective. All right. So I have the note card in my hand right now. So season three predictions. The first bullet point is Lila. I felt like Lila had great development through the first half of the season. And then ultimately she kind of dropped off in the second half. I mean, actually, no, that was when I initially watched it. I felt like they, I felt like Lila had actually, I felt like they gave good development for Lila. I think what they did, or I guess I felt like, she basically her like development within the season was done well so there's nothing i would have really done to change that because i mean i have my predictions for season four and five and her role in those but i think for season three i i felt like like her as a character was done right in season three i think that's all i have to say because obviously there's the first episode chameleon which is about her then she has various moments in later episodes and then she makes does she she no she doesn't make an appearance for them in the finale which is honestly kind of interesting but I'm, I'm kind of all right with that considering she had her moments in the finale in season two and then ultimately she had moments earlier in the season so yeah I think ultimately she was done right in the season I have to give props to them for that her character was done really well in terms of the season so yeah I'm not really sure as I, I could think of specifically what I think her obviously her and Camille was good like I said her allying with Gabriel I think that was really good move on their part um, Gabriel's opposed to Hawk Moth simply because that allows for more interaction because Gabriel has interaction with his son who subsequently has interaction with all his friends so it's like a more of a degree of separation because Hawk Moth or Gabriel as Hawk Moth doesn't interact with his son so what Hawk Moth wants to use Lila for is different than what Gabriel wants to use Lila for. And ultimately what Gabriel wants to use Lila for will be more so related to the characters than what Hawk Moth will. So I think it was a good move having her, um, having her uh, ally Gabriel as opposed to Hawk Moth. Because I think I initially wanted her to ally Hawk Moth, but Gabriel was ultimately the better choice as it did allow not only her character more development, but her more action, interaction with the uh, current gang of characters in the show so i mean besides that i'm not really sure it was literally like two three maybe four episodes in in the episodes that weren't about chameleon they weren't like entirely about her it was only she had moments within the episodes so yeah but overall i think her um i think her character in season three was done well i think they ultimately, I think they made the right choice with where they went with her character. So, yeah, I guess that was kind of sloppy. It was, like, not really organized. I guess I'll be more organized when going through the rest of the bullet points. So, yeah. All right. Um, I actually did, and I'm the second bullet point is Gabriel and Hawk Moth interacting with Master Fu. And uh, obviously that did happen in the finale. I initially, I guess I should say what I predicted and then ultimately what happened and whether I thought it was right or, or not, or what I think should happen. So what I initially predicted was that he would interact with Master Fu. I didn't necessarily think he would take him out or force him to, or I guess, I, I predicted he would interact with Master Fu, but it would be kind of like a brief interaction with just himself as Hawk Moth during like the middle of the season and ultimately he gets away. What ended up happening was ultimately the season finale was mainly centered around uh, Hawk Moth first off finding Master Fu and then ultimately defeating him, taking the Miracle Box, and then ultimately forcing him to uh, res rescind his role as the Guardian. So there's that. Whether I think that was right or good, yes, definitely. That was the right call. That was a good thing to do because... Uh, I have to admit, what I initially predicted, I'm not sure how they would have went about doing that. It obviously would have been a, a lot harder than what they actually did, is obviously they ended up, like, facing Master Fu out of the show, so they kind of don't really need to worry about his character arc now that they've ended it, 
but yeah, I think ultimately they did the right thing in how in Master Fu's character within season three was ultimately done well. So there's that. We don't need to change that because mainly I'm going through these and seeing what we need to change and what we can do to change it. Because I have sort of thoughts about what we need to change and I'll eventually hit on it through this list. But yeah, because we still have 21 episodes and ultimately five extra episodes. So just bear with me. This video might be a longer one. We'll see. All right. Next one, Natalie and Mayor. I have written death and illness and can no longer assist Hawk Moth. Death, illness, obviously death wasn't going to happen. However, she did get, or I guess, yeah, I'll see what happened. So what I predicted was that I didn't necessarily predict that she would die. I kind of think that's what I wanted at the time. But what I mainly realistically predicted was that she would, like, succumb to the effects of the damage from Arceus, which she did obviously, and then I said that she would no longer assist Hawk Moth, but I also have listed that she would use uh, the Peacock Miraculous against Hawk Moth's witches, which is what happened in uh, Ladybug, which is episode 24 of season of season 3. So, I mean, yeah, that was pretty much what, what I predicted. What actually happened was pretty much that. We saw her slowly succumb to the effects of the damaged Peacock Miraculous, and then we ultimately saw her use the Peacock Miraculous against Hawk Moth's wishes. So, I mean, obviously, I think they did that right. I think it was, I think it was done really well. I think Natalie was done really well in season three. In fact, she was done so well that she was, she's now my new favorite character in the whole show. So, that's how well she was done. I mean, it's just such a great character. I mean, like, such a good character. But yeah, like, so that was done really well. That was done really good. So, I mean, there's nothing else really to talk about that. Uh, so yeah, that was the third bullet point. So, so far we're good uh, for the first three things. If I had to go back and change it, I would have kept them the exact same. So the fourth thing is Dusu. And I actually have it misspelled. But basically, um, what I said was that, what I've written down is that we would see the Kwame, and then ultimately that the... I guess Peacock Miraculous would be irreparable, and then that's, and that's mainly what, uh, that's literally all I've written, because I, because I talked about Ellie and Mayura and her actions specifically, and then I talk about Dusu more in regards to the Peacock Miraculous, and that we would see the Kwame, and then the uh, Miraculous would ultimately, ultimately be irreparable. So what happened throughout the season was, or what happened in the season was that we did get to see Dusu, we saw her on, like, multiple occasions we had the initial reveal of her and then we had and that was during a what was that show what was that uh it was like reflecta i'm pretty sure yeah it was reflecta and then we had the we had subsequent uh we had subsequent review like not reveals but like moments where dusu would be shown and we also had moments where dusu was shown with new so there's that there's that's one thing uh, that was pretty cool i'm not gonna lie um yeah, in regards to the Miraculous being irreparable, obviously that's not true, as we did end up seeing it get repaired at the end of season three. That was literally the last moments in the season. That was like the post-credits for the season finale. So there's that. It did end up being repairable. So that was one thing I did predict wrong. Um, ultimately, how I what I think about it, I think Dusu was done right. I think... They did a really good job. They did really well in showing Dusu, like, her personality. Obviously, she's very eccentric. And ultimately, I really think showing her and Nuru when Gabriel was interacting with Natalie was really good. I just think that's cool that showing, like, two Kwamis together. Because Plague and Tiki, obviously, they're together. And they interact with each other. Nuru and Dusu, not so much. But simply having, like, a pair of Kwamis in a scene. Hold on a second. Just... Yeah, I think that's really good. So, yeah. Ultimately, the Peacock Miraculous being repaired, it all depends on what they do with Season 4. I mean, because I'm kind of hoping that, despite it being repaired, Natalie's condition doesn't improve. I went in a great amount of detail in my Season 4 and 5 predictions. It's a two-hour video of me basically saying what I think will happen for Seasons 4 and 5. But, yeah, it kind of all depends because... But I guess I should kind of ignore that and talk about the action itself. I mean, the Miraculous ultimately being repaired, it feels that, like, kind of defeats the purpose of, like, sort of the Peacock Miraculous's existence. 
in the show or in the current storyline, sort of as like a high risk, high reward, sort of like, like gl not like glass cannon, but it's more so like ultimately there's a price to pay when using it. And ultimately I think that's a good thing in that it will force Hawk Moth basically not to use Mayura all the time. Granted, I thought he wouldn't really use her at all, but he ended up using having Natalie act as Mayura a decent amount. It was like at least four or five, maybe, no, not six. It was like around four or five episodes where she was, where she basically had some sort of role in as Mayura. But I think ultimately it's better where it's damaged because it forces Hawk Moth not to use not to use it all the time or not to have Natalie use it. But ultimately, because it being repaired, it kind of makes it so that Natalie can just act as Mayura whenever she wants. It'd be interesting if Hawk Moth gives it to her like fully where he doesn't like keep it for himself and have her use it when he directs, but simply have her keep it. That would be very interesting. But I mean, then obviously people would kind of know Natalie's Mayura because it's like the same exact uh, piece of jewelry that Natalie would wear. But um, yeah, I guess, but it's not something that I'm too against. Like I'm all right with it. I think it was all right. Ultimately, yeah, so I guess ultimately, I think they did a good job with, I think they did it right both with Dusu and with repairing the Miraculous, because it was kind of inevitable that he would repair the Miraculous. It's simply that the mer the damaged Miraculous kind of has more implication on the show as opposed to it being repaired, but still, regardless, I think they did it right. It was done, those two topics were done fairly well. All right, so fifth bullet point, hold on. Now, this is actually, this, this one is the one where I'm going to go into a lot of detail on what I think should have been done, because this is the main one that I would have done differently, or what I think should have been done differently. Now, this is, what I've written now is Laybug and Chat Noir, and I have Unlock New Forms and Powers, and then Plague and Tiki. I think Plague and Tiki we can ignore, because I think ultimately, that was when I talked about Plague and Tiki seeing their seeing each other's owners in season three and i made that prediction without realizing it already happened in dark owl in season two so we can kind of ignore that but mainly ladybug and chat noir unlocking new forms and powers now what i predicted was that they would unlock a lot of new forms and powers in season three and by that i mean basically because in season the season two or well throughout season two well mainly only in a two instances but I guess in the season two finale, we saw Leibang Chan Noir use their water and ice forms. And that would ultimately, that was pretty cool. I think that was a great addition to the show. And I predicted that they would show new forms in season three. Obviously, that and by powers, I think, by powers more specifically, I meant kind of like how, because here's the thing. Ladybug, she, like each of the miraculous users, they have their weapons. Like obviously, there's that. Then they have their special power of Hawk Moth being Moth, Pro Moth Approach, uh, Chat Noir's being Cataclysm, Ladybug's being Lucky Charm, and Mayora's being like the basically sending in a muck. She doesn't actually say anything when she does that. But uh, yeah, or she doesn't have a specific name for that. And then they all have like innate powers. Ladybug's innate power is sort of to purify Kumas. Chat Noir's innate power is actually night vision. And we saw that in like one episode of season one, and then it was never brought up again. Um, I'm, I'm not sure whether Hawk, like, whether the other lesser miraculous have an innate power. I'm not entirely sure about that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like it. But at least, like, we know that the Ladybug and Black Cat miraculous has more powers than the lesser miraculous. So it would be interesting to see if we saw even more powers. Let's say Chat Noir discovers he has, like, super hearing as well. Or maybe, like, super sense of, like, smell or touch or something. Let's say Laybug discovers that she can sort of sense when a Miraculous is being used. Like, something kind of like that. It wouldn't be too sort of like, what would you call it? It wouldn't be too, like, big. It can't be a power that's too big where it changes, like, the whole dynamic of the show. But ultimately, it like, having them unlock new powers as well as, like, using new forms would ultimately be it would show like their growth and development as like superheroes now what happened during the season obviously there were no more new forms we saw the water form used once in the season finale we didn't even see the ice form in the season we actually no, we may have seen it once 
and that may have been during Christmas, or I don't know, I don't remember, I'll have to rewatch that, but I'm not sure, and obviously no new powers. Now, what I think should have happened, and since this one I'm actually going to make changes, I'm going to say where I will put it in the series, because remember, we're, I want to look at this more like a timeline as opposed to specific events, so there we go. Um, unlocking new forms in powers. The powers, I'm fine with them not giving them more powers. I'm being honest. Like, that was sort of like a wish, something I think would happen, but I think it's all right if... I think it's all right that they didn't do it. Like, I'm not going to really talk about that. I think I think they were, like, ultimately them using their powers was done well, especially with the development of sort of a strategy that I may or may not talk about later. Uh, but, yeah, I guess... I I'm I'm won't make a whole video on it, but basically where Chat Noir pretty much saves his cataclysm towards the last possible moment to use in, uh, what would you call it? Like, to basically be used, because ultimately what'll happen is Ladybug uses Lucky Charm at the very beginning to try and figure out a way to defeat the villain, and she doesn't have Chat Noir use his cataclysm until she knows, like, until she basically tells him how to use it, as opposed to Chat Noir, like, running in, uh, basically blazing like using cataclysm immediately she waits so that she can use it with her uh lucky charm that's something that has been that's a strategy that has been like taking place during season three that i have noticed but yeah because i'm not gonna make a whole video about it i'm just gonna stop with its mention there but yeah so that could be kind of like seen sort of like not necessarily like on the same level as them unlocking new powers but it shows their sort of comfortability in being superheroes and their sort of chemistry together like working as partners in order to defeat an akumatized villain but yeah just a moment so what i think should have happened with forms all right the f first we have to realize the first like 10 like the first half of the season it was mainly just standalone villains Granted, there were a few offset episodes with, like, Reflecta 2.0, ultimately, with, like, uh, with Miracular, like, those kinds of episodes where there was some more going on with, like, Mayura or whatnot. But besides that, it was just basically the first half of the season was standalone episodes. Now, I think during some of these episodes, they could have had them unlocking and then subsequently showcasing new power or new forms because Master Fu was still around at this time. This was before episode 15 Feast where Master Fu went into hiding. But while he's still in his like place of residence, or I guess not now, but while he was in his place of, of residence and during the first half of the season, that would have been a great time to showcase new forms on the part of ladybug and chat noir because we know they have the ability to transform into forms beyond the water and ice uh beyond their water and ice forms because we see them have a whole array of like uh with marinades macarons and with chat noir it's like various flavored cheese they can give to their kwamis in order to power them up in like well it's not necessarily power more than a change of form but yeah in order to power up their kwamis so that they can change their form so I think there should have been at least a couple or few episodes within the first half of the season during the standalone episodes that could have had them showcase using different forms. Now, I'm I'm just going to list off a few ideas just in just cuz like this is more specific like what specific forms for, forms I think they should have taken and what villain they would use them against. Now, I I think there should be a fire form or at, like a fire or heat form. And they could have taken it, like, on against, like, a villain who was, like, raising temperature or something. I mean, granted, kind of like the opposite of Stormy Weather 2, where she was freezing the Earth. But it'd kind of be, like, a sort of scenario where, uh, I guess, I guess not even the Earth be, would be heating. That wouldn't be a good scenario. It'd be more so, like, basically, ultimately, the villain would find a way to, like, sort of basically find their basically the villain would be adapted to heat and they would ultimately find their way into the place that had too much heat for ladybug and chat and water handle so they would have to transform into like their heat forms or whatnot so that they could basically deal with that because i mean obviously they have their ice forms and that deals with like ice and like skating or what i guess mainly it'd be deal with dealing with movement but like ultimately they're not going to walk into a building burning building 
we haven't seen that. So if they need to go into some place with extensive heat and or fire like flames or explosion or whatnot, then they could have a fire form for that or like a heat form. So another form I think would be cool would be a an uh, air form or air form kind of like how we obviously know they can't breathe like or they need to breathe like we've seen when they're underwater they need to use like oxygen masks when they're in space they need to hold their breath somehow they still survive i don't know but ultimately an air form that would be sort of like kind of like an over overpowered form because kind of like what i think it would do is it would make it so that they wouldn't really need to breathe or that bait and also that would sort of allow them to fight like again like i said underwater or basically in a vacuum with like no air or whatnot or basically anywhere where either air is thin or not or air doesn't exist basically any place where they any sort of scenario where they won't be able to breathe so even if they're in like let's say uh let's say there was smoke clogging up the air like let's bring it back to the heat like form let's say they couldn't really breathe if they were actually in a bur burning building i think an air form would be really cool in that ultimately it would i guess that would be the main ability it would basically allow them to like kind of breathe and like exist in places where air does not and kind of just like be all right but ultimately they could also have like air centered powers or whatnot basically may maybe even like levitate or like fly because we obviously know they have great physical ability like basically leaping from building to building so they we don't really need to worry about them having the ability to leap even higher or whatnot but like the ability to levitate or the ability to fly would also be cool now the way i think this could be implemented would be let's say there was a villain that basically like pretty much just gassed everyone let's just say there was a villain who ultimately like let's just say it was like a scientist but they basically create like a gas or something that would ultimately make it unbreathable or basically like yeah basically just a scenario where a villain would be able to breathe in like gas or like huffing gas that people cannot let's say it's like carbon or like no because people you can still breathe in co2 just not for long i guess i'm not a scientist but ultimately it'd be a scenario where basically the villain would be huffing in like his own sort of like gas in order to breathe ultimately create a space where only that gas exists but it's like unbreathable so ladybug and chat noir can't go in there kind of like similar to the uh heat villain or like fire villain where they basically they ultimately create a scenario where like it's, it's like ladybug and chat noir need to kind of lean to like go into like an area that is flame not just flammable but is already in flames in order to confront them and this would be them going into sort of a space where the villain's gas like is where basically the air doesn't exist and it's only the villain's gas so ultimately they would need to use the um air like form in order to do that so they wouldn't have to breathe because obviously they can go underwater use their masks i mean unfortunately they can't use their powers then or like their weapons but ultimately this would be something they wouldn't be able to do that for like they would still pass out or whatnot so they need to use the air miraculous for that and like i said i think it'd be cool if the air form or not air miraculous air form i think it'd be cool if the air form also kind of allowed them to have an R ability like kind of like levitate or fly and let's say the fire or like heat miraculous allowed them to like not cast flames because i mean that would be i'm not sure that'd be like a power reasonable power or whatnot but let's say like control existing flames like basically put flames out i think that'd be pretty cool yeah so there are two ideas i think another good idea would be like uh electricity or like lightning type form or basically let's say let's say uh it, it's kind of like it's it's the similar scenario where the villain's in an area where Leibung and Chat Noir cannot reach and they need to unlock a new form in order to get them. So let's say the villain this time is sort of like, let's say he's in like an electric like plant or not even like a plant. Let's just say he's somewhere that has an electric field or like electric current or maybe even like magnetic field that basically prevents Leibung and Chat Noir from coming towards him and they need to transform into like an electric or like magnetic form to basically be like immune to that and to basically make them immune to like electricity or electric current so they can't get like electrocuted basically but also that if there's like a strong magnetic magnetic force magnetic field or whatnot i'm not sure how they'd implement that let's say the villain can, can let's say the villain's basically magneto they would be like immune to that pretty much i mean ultimately 
Yeah, I think because that's really the scenario that they'd be implemented in, where the villain is in a place they cannot access, so they need to upgrade, they need to change their form to, like like I said, fire, flame form, like I said, uh, air, or like uh, space form, and then like I said, like electric or like magnet form. Those are just three ideas revolving around other elements, like fire, air, and electricity. Obviously, they already have water and ice, so they could probably come up with more. I mean, those are just three ideas. Like, at the bare minimum, like, I think, I th well, actually not the bare minimum. I think showcasing three more powers would have been excellent. I mean, but I guess really wrapping it all up, what I really think they should have done is they should have ultimately showcased more forms in the earlier half of the season, as ultimately they'd be able to go to Master Fu for help as he was still as he was still in this place of residence, and they'd be able to showcase the new forms. I really think that's what they should have done. It kind of feels like they brought in forms, like, they really, they showcase, like, the uh, ability to change the Miraculous user's form in Season 2, and then they kind of didn't go anywhere with that in Season 3. So that I did not think they did right. I definitely did not think they did right. I think they did that fairly poorly. It's almost kind of like insult to injury, using the water form in the season finale just to show that, like, hey, we didn't do anything involving these forms during the whole season. It really is kind of like an insult to injury. So I think they did that. That's probably the thing they did the worst, simply because they just didn't do it, and that's why it's so bad. Ultimately, they just they did that very poorly. I think anything would have been better than nothing in this kind of scenario. So there's that. There's the fifth point. That's the main one I wanted to touch on. When I'm done going through all these points, I'll do a recap of the whole video. Well, before that, I'll, also, I'll talk about what I want to do for the five episodes we've made space for by basically not doing the uh, mistake, or what I call the mistake episodes, so. All right, so let's get on to it. All right, the sixth point is Master Fu, what I've written down is Master Fu, die and phase out, and pass on mantle to Marinette. I'm still shocked I predicted that. I mean... That was something I didn't think would happen. I thought he would more, like, phase... Well, I guess, obviously, he didn't die. That was something I was, like, wishing would happen and didn't think would actually happen, Master Fu, like, phasing out of the show. But, yeah, obviously, like, what happened was there was the season finale, Master Fu transferred guardianship to Marinette. So, ultimately, the Miracle Box was hers. So, now she could only access it, and ultimately, he forgot all his memories so that it would protect the identities of Ladybug and Chat Noir. And, ultimately, he... He went with Lenore on a train to somewhere, but basically that closed both his and hers character arc, but mostly his character arc. So obviously, yes, they did phase him out, and or I guess, yeah, I guess that's kind of like, yeah, what I predicted was that I did, I, I was hoping, I didn't think he would die. That was just more so wishful thinking. I was thinking he would phase out. I'm not sure how they would have done that. I didn't really have a vision for that at the time, just it was something I was wishing would happen. And same with pass on the mantle to Mare now. Granted, I didn't think he would... I didn't think the Miracle Box would change. I thought it'd more so be like he'd give it to her at some point and then like give up being the uh, Guardian. I didn't think he would actually forget his memory. So that one I kind of went out of order, but that one there wasn't a lot because I was right. But yeah, what I think they did, I think what they did was right. I mean, I actually think it's better that they did that in the finale. They kept all that sort of development in the finale with like Gabriel and Hawkmoth's interaction with him, him phasing out the show. I think it's good that they sort of, uh, that they sort of, what would you call it? that they kept that limited to the finale is that would have taken up like sort of two May episodes. It was sort of like the, cause it's the finale episode, you can have a ton of development in that episode. And I think a ton of development revolving around the guardian of the miraculous, like the whole episode being revolved around that is good. I think that was ultimately a positive. I think they did. I think they, they definitely did that right. I think they did it very well, probably possibly as well as they could have. I think that was definitely that was definitely a good thing. That, I wouldn't have changed a bit. So, yeah. Anyway, there's the sixth one. The seventh one, the seventh bullet point I have is Waze. And then this is his, what I, this is his development with Nino and his renouncement. So what I predicted would happen was that because Waze at the time was the only miraculous used by multiple people, it was used by Master Fu and Nino. So what I thought would happen was that Master Fu would ultimately renounce basically the miraculous and ultimate i i thought he would give it to nino but more so it's granted that didn't happen more so he, nino would be the sole user and then there'd be more development with ways uh what happened was none of that 
literally just none of that. But I mean, here's, so there's those two out of the way quick, but um, like how that was, um, ultimately, like that wasn't a super high priority prediction. It wasn't something super high priority I want to see happen. It was more so just like, if it happened, then all right. It's It wasn't like a necessity. Like it's fine really without that specific thing happening like so yeah ultimately they, what they did was right or like it was done well enough like Nino using the uh, turtle miraculous multiple times obviously just never bringing it up but it wasn't something they needed to bring up to begin with so it wasn't like it, it's not it's not like the forms were like the forms were something they were showcasing and never followed through with this simply being just like sort of like a deduction or like it would be like a one scene type of thing where it would be like with Nino and Waze but I mean ultimately yeah it wasn't something that needed to happen so because it so given it didn't happen it's all right like it's not it, it literally is like zero effect so yeah what they by not doing it that was right it was well enough it was good enough that we just got to see more time with Nino using the uh what would you call it Nino using the um the turtle miraculous I forgot it for a second all right so that was what that was that was the seventh um bullet point now the eighth bullet point is actually Marin and Adrian in what I've listed as Ho and Adrian at all right so what I thought would happen because I in my um season two improvements video god that was an old video in that video, I talked about how they sort of abandoned the love square and really honed in on the idea of Adrianette. Because in season one, it was mainly about the very Adrian and Marinette's various interactions in their various identities. So you obviously had Adrianette, you had Marichette, you had Adrienne, or... Yeah, it was like... Wait, no, what? It was... I don't know. I'm like blanking right now. So you had... All right, so you had... Adrianette, yeah, Adrianette, that's obviously Adrian and Marinette, you had a, a Lady Shat, and that was Ladybug and Shat Noir, you had uh, Mara Shat, which is, uh, that is Marinette and Shat Noir, and then you have, uh, you have, I'm, I'm blanking on these names, uh, Ladrian, and that was, yeah, Ladybug and Adrian, so yeah, there's that. Those, it, it kind of like, it showcased various interactions between the characters in their various uh, identities. So, obviously, I mean, there was kind of like, at the time, it was kind of like everyone talking about which one of the specific uh, ships were at. But in season two, they kind of did away with that. And it was more so focusing on Adrian and Marinette and them as people rather than their various identities. And this may have been coupled with the reveal of Gabriel and his Hawk Moth and focusing in on him as his own character instead of two separate characters. But yeah, they definitely honed in on Adrianette. So yeah, going off of that, I predicted they would hone in more on season three. That was kind of like, we need the backstory to understand what I was predicting. So yeah, I predicted they would hone in on Adrianette more in season three. I mean, what ended up happening was that Luca and uh, Kagami got more time with Marina and Adrian, so kind of the opposite. Um, but that isn't necessarily bad, because what I was, that, yeah, that isn't necessarily bad, it's not necessarily a bad thing, like, I think they did it, like, all right, I think they did it fairly well, they're kind of, they kind of sowed the seeds of division between Adrian and Marinette for now, and I'm hoping that during season four, they get more time, spend more time together, and start slowly coming back together as opposed to simply them being with their subsequent partners and them realizing that basically the other, they were kind of on a, well, I guess they would be unappreciated. They're in the time events of season three and them ultimately realizing that, that they kind of weren't really, I wouldn't say taking advantage, but they weren't spending as much time together as they should have. So there's that. Um, that's for season four. So ultimately what I would have done, or if I were to go back, I... It would either be one or the other. Hone in on Adrianette or sow the seeds of the vision between them for now and then hope for season four. Honestly, because I'm concerned I'm fine with how they ended up doing it with Luka and Kagami, I think it's all right. Um, yeah, I think that's all right. Like, I think they did it all right, so I probably wouldn't change anything. 
like I would have yeah like I said they did it all right it was done well I would have kept it the same simply because they did it well enough to convince me that we don't really need to hone in super hard on major or Adrianet now simply because they they had Kagami's and Luca's development fairly well so there's that that was what that was the eighth of a bullet point now this is the ninth bullet point in that it is Alia, Nino, and Chloe, and it's keeping their miraculous. Obviously, what I predicted, granted, what I predicted was that they would ultimately keep their miraculous. I was really hoping it wouldn't happen, but ultimately, and obviously it didn't, like we know that. So, there's that. Um, what is it uh, in regards to, or I guess, yeah, what did end up happening was they didn't keep their miraculous in... Chloe actually wasn't, she used her miraculous once early on and then ultimately wasn't able to use it again until the finale, or basically Laybug Marinette wouldn't give it to her again as Hawk Moth knew her identity, and then obviously Nino, Ali and Nino, they got to use their miraculous, so that's what actually happened, um, whether I think they did it right, yeah, I think they did it right, I think they did it right, I'm gonna give them that, I think they did it fairly well, they had Alia and Nino not use their Miraculous. It, was, it wasn't until, like, Miracula, I think, that they ended up using their Miraculous. So that'd be, that'd leave even more time early in the season to have episodes showcasing new forms. Yeah, ultimately, I think they did that all right. Like, having Alia and Nino not use their Miraculous super early on, but also have, like, sort of an episode centered around the old uh, team of Ladybug, Chat Noir, uh, Care Paste, uh, tricks and no it wasn't tricks it was Rena Rouge and uh, uh Queen Bee so yeah and then ultimately there was also other development in regards to like the plot involving like turning Chloe into like a villain or Hawk Moth basically befriending Chloe and getting her to join his side so I think ultimately what they did with that I think they did that right I think they did that well uh, if I had to go back and change it I wouldn't if I had to go back and like I would have kept it the same if I had to go back and like decide whether to change it or not yeah i would have definitely kept it the same i think because obviously them keeping them miraculous it was something i predicted but it was something i didn't want to happen so given that they didn't do it i was relieved and i was i'm kind of happy yeah, i would have kept it that way so there's that that was what i think that was the ninth yeah that was the ninth uh bullet point the tenth bullet point is the last one and this is um the non-akumatized and uh this is just or just like what I ever in doubt is not akumatized in like Marinette, Adrian, uh, Mrs. Mendeleev, Marinette's parents, and potentially like Chat Noir. So, but that kind of goes with Adrian. So, what I predicted was that all the non akumatized people would end up being akumatized basically, or at least the important ones, because obviously Marinette and Adrian's important. Well, not. Marinette actually did end up getting akumatized, Adrian not. But uh, Mrs. Mendeleev, she's kind of important because she was someone people originally thought to be Hogwarts, so I thought that'd be kind of cool and like a throwback. Marinette's parents, yeah, those were some of the few people left who haven't been akumatized, and they both were akumatized at some point. And then Chat Noir, we obviously saw with Shot Blanc. But I mean, that was kind of hoping for Chat Noir. I didn't actually think they would akumatize Chat Noir in an episode, especially in an episode that had that much sort of impact on, like, basically the entire show. So, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, what did happen was they all did, like I said, they all did get akumatized. Uh, Marinette and her mom got akumatized for a brief instant in, um, what was it, Ladybug? Because Hawk Moth transformed into Scarlet Moth and ultimately got them while Marinette was disgruntled, and that was really cool to see. Because, I mean, obviously there's all the fake edits on, like, YouTube or, like, social media sites, even the fake comics of, like, uh, Marinette getting uh, akumatized. But seeing it happen in the season was really cool, even if it didn't follow through as Hawk Moth ultimately detransformed. Seeing her and her mom get akumatized was pretty, that was pretty cool. And I mean, yeah, obviously, Mrs. Mendeley, she did get akumatized, and her episode actually had a de quite a decent amount of uh, development to it. Like, her episode about Kwame Buster had quite a decent amount of, like, plot and story or whatnot. So that was a pretty good episode, uh, given, like, the character as well as what w went on during the episode. And then uh, Adrian and Chat Noir, yeah, obviously, he got akumatized as that during um shop long but you couldn't really differentiate them at that point in time so there's that but um yeah that was pretty cool not gonna lie even though i think it had poor repercussions on the rest of the show i think it was pretty cool so 
what I would have done, um, given I cut out, or was it the right thing? I think it was, yeah, I think it was the right thing, uh, ultimately. I think they did it fairly well. My only gripe is obviously with shot block. So if I had to change it, I would have just not had Adrian or Chat Noir kumatized at all. Uh, given the events of Shop Blanc, I just would have cut that episode entirely. Like I said, at the beginning of the video, I just, I really don't think, like, they should be messing with time. Like, any sort of series that starts to mess with time is just like, alright, yeah, I'm about to head out. It's not really, it just, it, 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 it just doesn't really, like, it seems like an easy expansion, but ultimately it's like, sort of like, an excuse it's kind of like a crutch so that they don't really have to focus on the present series they can more so focus on the future or whatnot or even on like various alternative timelines or whatnot stuff like that just kind of stupid stuff but yeah if i had to go back like i said if i had to go back and change it ultimately it would just be like i said uh, miss mendeley would have gotten akumatized obviously matt's dad got akumatized and then marin i think hawk moth having been transformed into scarlet moth again and having to kubatize Marinette and her mom. I think that was good. I would have kept that, definitely. That was really cool. Um, but, yeah, that's so that was what I would have kept. That's what I would have gotten rid of. I'm actually going to stop the video now because um, I have to do something. But this is kind of like a partway break. So, yeah, that's just that's that. I'll know the star in the next uh, side of the note card. And then, so, I'll just list the bullet points we have left. It's uh, other Kwamis. Uh, Laybug and Chant Noir won't give out new Miraculous. They won't switch the Miraculous either. Amele and Natalie and then I have endings for season four and five and conclusions but I'm not going to bring up those in um I'm not going to bring those up in this episode but after those last five um after I go over those last five I'm going to re go over like all the additions I think should have been made for the series and then I'm going to go over what we should have what could have been done with those extra five episodes given that we got rid of the mistake episodes so I mean yep I guess next half it is all right continuing off from yesterday um this video shouldn't take too much longer i think maybe around 30 to 45 more minutes if you just randomly skip to this point in the video um i only have five more points to talk about and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna uh go do a whole run through back of all the points and all the changes i should have been made and then i'm going to address what i think the uh five extra episodes should have been because remember I one of the things the first thing I would have done in order to, if I could go back and change things would be to get rid of all of the mistake episodes is like I said they each have some big implication that I feel is detrimental to the series so that leaves us five extra episodes and obviously we need to fill that time so I, I know what I want to say but I'll get to that when it's time uh, before that I just need to get through the five these last five things because I'm going off my season three predictions in case, like, you made it this far and don't know what I'm talking about. Like, basically, I'm just saying whether the, this kind of similar to the prediction reflections video, but this is more so applying it to how we can improve this series as some of the predictions I made weren't actually that good. So I need to kind of go back and reflect on that. So, yeah, I guess the uh, I actually think this is the 10th. I'm not sure. Like. But yeah, this is the 10th bullet point, I think. The number doesn't really matter, but we only have five left, so that's what's important. So this bullet point, what I've written down is uh, other Kwamis, and that they won't introduce new Kwamis. Obviously, I was wrong. Um, that's probably the one that I was the wrongest about, if you could say that out of any of my predictions. Because, uh, yeah, I basically predicted that they wouldn't introduce any new Kwamis or Miraculous into the show and that was obviously dead wrong. I thought that they would stick with the ones they currently have being the Laybug and Black Cat Miraculous. It would be the Turtle, Fox, and B Miraculous. And then obviously Hawk Moth or Gabriel and uh, Natalie having the uh, Butterfly and Peacock Miraculous. And I thought they would just stick with that. Um, but yeah, that didn't happen. So what ended up happening was they introduced a lot of new Miraculous. Actually, they introduced... The Snake Miraculous, um, the Dragon Miraculous, the Horse Miraculous, the Monkey Miraculous, the Rabbit or Bunny Miraculous. That one wasn't actually introduced in the present timeline, though. That was introduced in the 
Well, I mean, technically it was, as the future Bunnix needed to use the present timeline Bunnix's stopwatch, but I mean, it, it doesn't exist in the present day timeline. It's just the other four that do. And then, yeah, so, and then we also got to see, like, well, I guess we kind of saw it in season two, in, a, I think the episode was Sandboy, where it was basically all the Kwamis trying to contact Nura, but they ended up contacting Hawk Moth. So we've seen all of them before, but now we get to see some of them. In oh, we also saw the Mouse Miraculous, and that was used by uh, Marinette in, um, what was it, Kwami Buster. So we got introduced to, I think, six new Kwamis. I think that's all the new ones that were introduced. Yeah, I mean, so they pretty much doubled or nearly doubled the amount of uh, Kwamis and Miraculous that exist in Season 3. And, yeah, I mean, so I was basically the exact opposite of what I predicted and basically as wrong as I could be. Now, I guess whether I think it's right, I mean, I think it's right. I, I think they did a good job introducing the new Miraculous, and I think they did it well. However, I still have some gripes about how they did it so i guess i could uh this will be like a there are, well i guess i could say it was the right choice but they didn't do it well i'm who am i can like they could have done it better like this is one of the weird like instances where i go back on what i thought earlier in that i think i was wronging thinking they shouldn't have introduced new miraculous i think it was good that they did but i think they didn't go about it well and yeah i'll explain that now uh, the first reason for that is we didn't really get any development with uh, the old, like, sort of, the old Miraculous team from Season 2. Like, we, well, granted, we actually did get some development with Chloe, which I actually think that was fairly good. I didn't predict, like, anything would change for her, uh, or anything would change about her for season three which is why I don't have a bullet point but it actually did I think I think Chloe in terms of her as a miraculous user and her character I think that was done I think that was right I think they I think it was done fairly well and I think the direction they're going with her was right I think that was ultimately good but Alia and Nino didn't really get much development I mean they're kind of special in that they're the only two Miraculous users who actually know each other besides basically Marinette or as Ladybug knowing who she's giving the Miraculous to. So they're kind of special in that way so that they're like a superhero couple fine team but they didn't really get any time in season three. They may have been in for only one episode. I'm not even sure. No, they weren't a part of the season finale but they were obviously fighting uh, Ladybug and Chad Noir, but I think they were only really used in one episode, and that was miraculous, so I mean, I, I, I think that wasn't the right case, I don't think that was the right move, I think they should have definitely had, a uh, more instances of, like, using, uh, what would you call it, N uh, using Care Paste and Rena Rouge, because obviously they showcased all the new miraculous users, and I'm gonna get to that, but I mean, they could have used, like, the old ones more, because I mean, They've already had that sort of development, and they need to keep continuing developing. It's kind of like, this is kind of similar, but not on the same level as Ladybug and Chat Noir not getting any new forms. It's kind of like, they introduce, like, a team of Miraculous at the end of Season 2, but ultimately, it doesn't really follow through as being a team, despite, you know, the team dynamics. Obviously, Chloe got a lot of development, so that's why I think, I this isn't really pertaining to Chloe at all, because I think they did her character well. But in regards to Ali and Nino and themselves as, like, miraculous users, I don't really think they did them justice. And like I said, kind of like the forms, they introduced the forms and didn't follow through. It's kind of like, yeah, they introduced this team and they followed through on the part of Chloe, but not on Ali and Nino as, what are their names? Care, Pace, and Rena Rose. So that's the first thing that I think they did wrong. Or that's the first thing I think that didn't go well, that they didn't do well. I think they should have... Uh, use them more. I think there should have been more development with that. Maybe, well, I guess I'm not sh maybe even Chat Noir figuring out who they are. That would be interesting, as I think, because Chat Noir knows, well, she, he thinks Marinette is Minnie Mouse. Who else does he think? I think he knows Kagami is, uh, I don't even remember what her name was, but that was because that was revealed. Uh, who else? Obviously, he knows Chloe's Queen Bee. I swore there was one more that had their identity revealed. I'm not sure. Oh, he knows, um, 
he knows Luca is a, a I don't even remember his name. Actually, I'm not sure whether... Well, I mean, actually, no, that's irrelevant because they all know the Miraculous Years is now at the end of Season 3. So that's... I was just... I wasn't thinking. I completely forgot about that because that was something I wanted to talk in the next video, which I'm going to make. This is just part two, like, for the first video. I need to edit these together. So, yeah. I mean... So, like, I don't know how specifically they would do development. I just would have liked them to... I just would have liked to see uh, Nino and Alia be used more as, have them use their Miraculous more as opposed to using it for like one episode and then basically like not being used again. Because they really are kind of special. They are kind of like distinct from the rest of uh, Laybug and Chat Noir's like partners. Like the original team really has like the most development and the most like potential basically being Laybug, Chat Noir, Queen Bee, probably not anymore, but I mean, obviously, like I said, Chloe was done right. They was done, she was done really well. Her character was, like, I felt what they did for her was right. It was probably done as good as it could be. I think all the development she got was definitely done really well, so. But in terms of Alia and Nino, like I said, just didn't really follow through. It's like, despite them having the big potential of them knowing each other, and all them basically being there since the beginning, not beginning, but like them being the first ones to receive, to basically to receive the miraculous in order to help fight Laban Channel. Or so that's that's done with the first part of how I think it could have been improved. The second part about how I think it could have, or not necessarily improved, but done better, because obviously it was the I think I'm like I said I'm going back on my prediction that there won't be other Kwamis and Miraculous and I'm going to back going to go back saying that was a wrong dis that was a that wasn't a good prediction that was a because that was something I wanted to see but I'm now going back and saying that that wouldn't have been that wouldn't have been the right call so they they made like I said they made the right call introducing new Miraculous and new Kwamis but ultimately it could have been done better so the second way in which it could have been done better was I think the people who like got the Miraculous to begin with I'm not gonna lie. I think I think Kagami and Luca should have gotten Miraculous. I think that was a good call. I think that was a good uh, what would you call it? That was a good call on them in order to give the two people who are contesting Adrianette the Miraculous. I think that would give them more development. Is they're obviously very important to the story for that reason that they're the two people who are standing in the way of the Adrianette ship. So I think they deserve to Miraculous. But I think like. Max, and yeah, I remember all these characters' names now. Max, uh, Kim, I think uh, Alex gained the Miraculous. I think that was, or well, she technically didn't get the Miraculous, but it was revealed that she will in the future. I think that was all right. Granted, I don't, th well, actually, no, I don't think that's all right, because one of my main reasons, one of the biggest mistakes I think the show made was introducing the concept of time, is that is ultimately just, it's sort of like, it's the it's a it's an excuse. It's kind of like it's like a crutch. It's like a scapegoat. Like an easy way out. Basically to it's if you need to explain something just blame it on time as opposed to like using development in the actual timeline or like the current timeline. So I mean I don't think they should have introduced the concept of time through Bunnix into the show. But I mean given that they did, I think the reveal that Alex would have a Miraculous in the future, I think that was all right. Because, I mean, despite her not having a lot of, uh, like, despite her not having a lot of screen time in the current timeline, like, her not being very active or, like, involved in Marinette and Adrian in whatever they're doing in, like, their little friend group or whatnot, I mean, it's it's still all right. Because it, it needed to happen or it needed to be someone, so... She, the reveal that it was her, is, that was all right. It really, they could have really picked anyone, but I think them picking her, I think, if you take a look at everyone we know in their character, I think Alex would have, was the right choice. So I think, I think uh, Alex, ultimately them giving her, or the revelation that she is Bunnix in the future, 
I think that was all right because I've talked a little bit about how Bunnix was really like the perf. I'm actually I'm not sure I talked about this, but I may have mentioned that Bunnix was like the perfect miraculous user, basically like the perfect person to wear the miraculous even more so than Ladybug, and I'm I'm actually not sure whether I talked about it, but that's something I firmly believe as she ultimately holds the greatest responsibility out of any miraculous wear, given she has control over time itself. But ultimately, her development, and as we see her in the future timeline, she is the ideal miraculous wear. So, I think ultimately, them they looked at her character and saw that she was she would be someone who would be capable of having the responsibility of basically maintaining time itself. And I think she ultimately deserved to have it out of anyone. I'm kind of going back on my other point, but yeah, basically, they needed to pick someone random in order to give the uh, Bunny Miraculous to her Rabbit Miraculous. I don't know which one it is. I'll just say Bunny Miraculous because it's a spin on name. So they needed to pick someone random to give the Bunny Miraculous to so that they could introduce like time as a concept into the series. And ultimately, I think Alex was the best choice. So there's that. So the characters of Luca, Kagami, and Alex. I think those three were ultimately good picks. Obviously, I mentioned before Luca and Kagami, considering they're the two who are standing between Adrianette, and they're the ones who are really sort of sidelining the Adrianette ship and like plot or whatever. And ultimately, because they have a lot of involvement in Marinette and Adrian's life, or like in Marinette and Adrian's group, well, more so specifically them as individuals, given their like love affairs or whatnot, or not, no, not affairs, because not, it's not official yet, but ultimately they're like love interests. I think ultimately them giving them the miraculous is ultimately was ultimately the right move given that they are of greater importance to the story and the plot given their role as the two people sideline in Adrianette pretty much. So them and I already explained why Alex was the right choice. So those three were the right choices and I think those three were solid choices. Those are probably the first three that they came up with but Max and Kim. Those are the two I have gripes with. I don't think those two should have received the Miraculous, if I'm being quite honest. They aren't really that involved in, like, Marinette and Adrian's sort of friend group. I mean, barely. They don't really have any sort of, uh, they don't really have any sort of weight in, like, the story. They're kind of just too, like, I mean... Even they themselves, like, I guess they, they would be cut out to be, like, superheroes. But, I mean, they're not like Kagami and Luca who have direct ties into uh, Marinette and Adrian's love interests. Or, like, Alex, who would be a solid choice for someone to bear the responsibility of maintaining time in the future, ultimately. She was a random pick as well. But it seems like Max and Kim are random picks that don't really just for the sake of adding another miraculous like wear and user. And it would be interesting if they could go somewhere with their character, but the problem was in the season three finale, they got exposed as everyone who has worn a miraculous besides Ladybug and Shaq Noir has gotten exposed. So I predict that they won't use them in season four. So I mean it and especially since they were introduced at like the very end of the season they had kind of their own episode and then no real development following. So it seems kind of like, because it's important, like, in order to wear the Miraculous, it's kind of like the more people you give it to, the less, uh, the less, like, Im value of importance, like, the Miraculous has. If you're kind of just, like, giving everyone a Miraculous, it decreases the value of the Miraculous itself and, like, Max and Kim, they have, like I said, no real weight into the story, no real ties in terms of Marinette and Adrian's, like, love interests like Kagami and Luca. They're not really, like I said, also a solid choice for basically someone maintaining order throughout time in that Alex was probably the person who had the best character who could do so. So that wasn't necessarily random, but it was also, it was a deliberate choice, but it needed to be someone who already didn't have involvement much in the story as opposed to Max and uh, Kim who don't have much involvement but them getting the Miraculous for the present timeline because they don't have much involvement it really 
it, it doesn't like it doesn't make sense in a way it just it feels that it was ultimately the wrong decision and something that should have happened they may have well spent though they may have well not have given them their miraculous and spent time more time like i said developing nino and adrian as their or not nino and adrian nino and ali as they're ultimately they're ultimately like i said part of the old team of five the miraculous superhero team and they're kind of special for that reason and also that they know each other's superheroes identity so that would have been a better choice rather than give sort of two miraculous to kind of arbitrary characters in max and kim so that's all i've that's like what i have to say for max and kim specifically but i'm also going to offer who i think should have gotten a miraculous instead now i kind of talked about who i thought or why well, i basically said that the rest of the uh class would receive miraculous in season season four everyone who hasn't received a miraculous yet is essentially because hawk moth now knows the identity of all the old miraculous users so it wouldn't make sense to give them their miraculous back in season four so but i guess for who i think should have gotten it as opposed to them in season three because i'm not just going to say they shouldn't have gotten it and then them focus on others granted that's why i think should have happened but obviously just sort of saying that without reason basically cutting down the story it almost kind of be like saying that oh they shouldn't have given out a new miraculous and only focused on the current team of five like yeah it's it's not really the right choice if their mindset was to give as many people miraculous as they can then i need to come up with more people who they could have given it to instead of max and kim because i think really those two may have been some of the worst not the worst choices in miss boussier's class but i mean it, it, they weren't strong choices so i'm so like anyway just a quick recap because i'm gonna like go straight into it all right so the first way i think the other Kwame's and miraculous didn't go well was because there wasn't so much development on ali and nino's part they ultimately didn't really get much developments because introducing our miraculous and Kwame's ultimately ended up sidelining them i think it was the right choice like i said but they didn't do it well in that aspect the second part being that uh, Luca, Kagami, and Alex were good choices for their Miraculous for their each of their respective reasons, but I ultimately feel that Kim and Max weren't necessarily strong choices for their Miraculous. They, were, they weren't the worst in the class in terms of them receiving Miraculous, but ultimately I don't really think they were necessarily like a strong pick, so there's that. And now I'm going to give who I think should have gotten it now. So given we have two Miraculous to give out, we have to think about that. Now, this is this might come as a surprise. Let's say you skip to this point randomly in the video. This may come as a surprise, but I think the strongest candidate would have been Sabrina. And the main reason for this is her relation to Chloe. Given, obviously, Chloe has been publicized as Queen Bee. Everyone knows she's Queen Bee. And Sabrina, more than any other character, is the one who interacts with Chloe. She's... I would say really the only friend of Chloe's. I wouldn't even really call Adrian Chloe's friend. But I mean, Sabrina's really the only person who spends time with Chloe and really is getting to know her despite what it may seem in that Chloe doesn't care about Sabrina. Because we can assume there are lots of other sort of... We can assume that within the story there are moments like off camera that don't happen if there are like time scripts or whatnot where Sabrina does spend time with Chloe. And so we can assume that they know each other a lot more than it actually seems. So Sabrina, sort of, her being close to Chloe, I feel gives her kind of, what should I say? Obviously, she's probably closer to the Miraculous than anyone else who doesn't own one, simply because she's always with Chloe. And Chloe, like I said, has been publicized as Queen Bee. So Chloe obviously talks to Sabrina about the Miraculous herself, Ladybug and Chat Noir all the time. I mean, so Sabrina knows more about the Miraculous than the average, n like, non-Miraculous user, just like your average Joe, basically. And I feel that, and so that's one of the reasons why I think she should have gotten it. That's reason, that reason in itself makes her competitive. But the second reason is there also could have been some interesting development with sort of her and Chloe, because I guess Chloe wouldn't know Sabrina would be a Miraculous user, but Sabrina would also get the Miraculous and know, basically know Chloe as a Miraculous user, as Chloe would just think Sabrina, if she had a Miraculous, she would just be like some random person. 
But I mean, Chloe, Sabrina would obviously not know that. Or Sabrina would know that that's not the case. So if she had some interaction with Chloe, whether it be as Chloe or Queen Bee as her transformed self, that could be some very, that could be very interesting. That would be some really good development on the part of both Sabrina and Chloe. And if Sabrina reveals her identity to Chloe, that could also be very interesting. Like if she reveals it to Chloe, but to like no one else, that would be very interesting. That could lead, that would lead to some great development for, for not just Sabrina and it, for Chloe as well as obviously we saw Chloe had a lot of development during season three. That's one of the things I said was done right and that was done really well. But ultimately she could have had more development along with Sabrina getting her own development if Sabrina was picked instead over Kim and Max to wear Miraculous. So that's all, that would ultimately be in our, my number one pick and who should have gotten a Miraculous instead of uh, Max and Kim. Now... And now for those reasons, I think she's far beyond any other person in Miss Boussier's class who should receive it. Now, for the second pick, this could honestly be like a toss-up, honestly. Granted, I don't, I don't necessarily think Max or Kim should have gotten it because their personalities didn't really change from wearing a Miraculous. I think, I actually don't remember all these names. Uh, I think, uh, I don't remember the other couple. I could quickly look it up, but it's like the big dude and then the small, like, girl. The the guy who got transformed and stolen her. Anyway, ignoring that. I think, basically, I'm going to give two, maybe three people who I think should have gotten it instead and, like, arguments why. So, I think if, if I had to pick one and two and basically leave it at that, like, I couldn't say, like, who tied for second or, like, who would get, like, third or fourth or whatnot. I think Nathaniel should have gotten the... Uh, second miraculous now nathaniel he had a lot of development in like nathaniel i originally shipped nathaniel and marinette in case you didn't know i'm pretty sure i mentioned that before if you skip to this point in the video that's my confession he had a lot of development in season one not just in his own episode as the illustrator but also he was more active within like marinette and adrian's friend group in season one and then season two came and he was ultimately sidelined during the season. Granted, he found, he met the, I don't remember what the guy's name was, but they like, he, he, the other guy was the one who like wrote and Nathaniel was the one who drew. So they collabed and now they're doing work for like the school's art club or whatnot. Or basically they're making like a novel. I don't even know what kind of their plot. I don't really follow it. But I think ultimately Nathaniel, if he got the miraculous the, f the main reason that makes him competitive is all the development he's already had. And then in season one, like I said, and then also because he got almost getting sidelined in season two would ultimately be a benefit that would work out in his favor as him getting the miraculous would kind of bring him back into the main light of sort of like the show itself. He would kind of, it would kind of bring him back into like Marinette and Adrian's friend group. Obviously he would interact with Ladybug and Chat Noir ultimately and I just think it would do justice for his character as season two definitely did not. So I think I think that would have ultimately been a strong pick as well. Not as strong as Sabrina. But like I said, this second pick can really go to one of a few people. So Nathaniel will be a strong pick. Uh, the next pick for the second user of the Miraculous, I'm actually thinking who would also be a strong pick would be Julica. Now, this is kind of what I meant when I mentioned that Max and Kim, their personalities didn't really change from having the Miraculous. It gave them a little bit of development in that they were able to work with, obviously being a Miraculous user is a big thing, and they're able to work with like Laybug and Chat Noir and whatnot, but ultimately their characters didn't really change. Like their personalities didn't really change. Now obviously we know Julica, she's shy, she's introverted. She's She has like likely anxiety or maybe some form of like, uh, what would you call it? Uh, attention dis what is it attention deficit disorder no that's literally ADD but some sort of like she may be like suffering from like some sort of anxiety basically that's what I think ultimately would be it because it's more than just normal shy introvert stuff I'd say go as far as say maybe she has some anxiety I don't know I don't know the lore or like what's canon for each character but ultimately I think she would have been a much stronger choice than Kim and Max 
for the not as strong as Sabrina, like because I already gave the reason why Sabrina should have gotten first pick, but she would have been a strong second candidate to gain the second miraculous. Is ultimately, I feel like that would help develop her personality in terms of it would help sort of bring her out of her bubble. Granted, we already saw her in Reflecta, that was kind of her episode, but she never got any more development in season three, so that would kind of bring her out of her bubble. And it would ultimately really, I think that would help develop her character and her personality. I really think that would sort of change her. It would really make her more comfortable with who she is, as opposed to kind of Kim and Max, who are already that way. So their character and personalities didn't really change from receiving the Miraculous. So that's ultimately why I think uh, Juka could, could have been a strong second choice. Now, I think those two are the main choices. Um, Rose, I think she could have been a strong second but I mean, the problem being, it would kind of need to be both her and Julika gain it. Because if it's like Sabrina and Rose, then kind of like, why would you not just give the Miraculous to Julika instead? So there's that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember those two characters' names. I could quickly Google them, but I mean, I don't want to edit the videos together. But it's basically, it's the guy who got transformed in Stoneheart, and then his girlfriend, obviously. So... I think those two, they aren't really that strong of candidates, candidates, I think, and then that, yeah, so I don't really think they should have been, they should get the Miraculous at all. I predicted they would get it in season four, but I mean, first season three, I don't think they should have gotten it, so, all right, taking a step back, um, who I think should have gotten it instead, like I said, I don't think Kim or Max should have gotten it, I think who should have gotten it instead is Sabrina, she would be a definite pick. She would be a strong first choice with who should have gotten the Miraculous instead of Kim and Max because of what I've already explained. I think uh, Nathaniel or Julico would be a strong second choice. It should be one of them too. Um, I would prefer Nathaniel, but that's for personal reasons. But I can also see why Julico would get it. And ultimately, I think a combination of either Sabrina and Nathaniel or Sabrina and Julico would have been stronger choices for Miraculous users than Max or Kim for their respective reasons now. All right, that was long. This this will, um. yeah, this this will be, yeah, that was actually really long because this was only one bullet point for 30 minutes. But um, sign, kind of wrapping it all back up. Now, I think with other Kwamis in other Miraculous, my prediction was that they wouldn't introduce new Kwamis or Miraculous. That was wrong, obviously, and I think in me wanting that, I think it was ultimately the right choice for them to introduce new Miraculous and Kwamis, like I said, but I think they went about it wrong. I think they didn't do it well. I think they didn't do it. I think they didn't. It wasn't really done that good. Like, it could have been done better, and yeah, the three reasons for that, like I said, are one, uh, Nino and Alia, their time kind of got sidelined as uh, Care, Pace, and Rina Rouge. I felt they should have had... Uh, at least one, maybe two more episodes, or just a little bit more action as Carapace and Rita Rouge, given they're a part of the original five, and they also know each other as superheroes, so that leads to some good development for them as superheroes, and both as civilians as well. And yeah, they, they're they ultimately, they're basically essential to the story. I'd say they're the two most important characters in Marinette and Adrian's friend group, besides themselves. So I think they should have gotten more time as opposed to simply having like one episode in Miracula. I think they should have ultimately got more development. And that's the first point. I think Chloe, Chloe's development was well. Her development was done right. It was done really well. It was done good. Obviously, this kind of season was really, it was really about her throughout the latter half of the season. It kind of was in the previous season, but not so much. But especially this season, this season was really about her, especially with the season three finale. I think her character was done right. I think ultimately we're, like I said, where they're going with her character arc is right. I think she was done really well. Like, that's one of the best things that came out this season. This season, her character development. So, yeah, Chloe was done right, but ultimately, Ali and Nino, they needed more development. Now, the second point is that, ultimately, I don't think Kim and Max were strong choices for the Miraculous. And I've mentioned why that is. I mean, basically, that's... I've Or, well, I actually talked to... Actually, no. This The second point was that... uh. Ultimately, who was a good pick for the Miraculous, given that they would be introducing new Miraculous in Season 3, in this season? I think um, I've ex I think Kagami, Luca, and Alex were good picks for Miraculous users, all for their own subsequent reasons. 
Kagami and Luka, given that they are the two main uh, factors, like driving a wedge between Adrianette, they're the two main love interests of the main character, so it obviously makes sense that they would get the Miraculous for more character development on their end or their part. And then obviously Alex, like I said, because ultimately they need, if given that they were going to introduce time or the concept of time within the show, and they're going to introduce a present day character who would be a miraculous where in the future. And given that that character would have the responsibility of maintaining the flow of time itself, I feel like they needed to pick a character who wasn't that, uh, who wasn't that essential within Marinette and Adrian's friend group, but who was also kind of had like the perfect character or per who had the perfect character or personality to bear such a responsibility. And I ultimately think Alex fit that description. Well, I think, she was the right choice out of anyone, given what we've seen of future Bunnix to wield the, or to reveal that ultimately she will wear Miraculous in the future. So that's kind of the second part and why uh, the people who ultimately, the three people who they did give, or the two people who they gave Miraculous to and the third person who they revealed where will wear Miraculous were ultimately the right choices. Now the third part, why I think it... Uh, wasn't done well or I guess this is kind of stemming in from the second part because the second part was done well but this ultimately leads into the third part now the third part of what was uh what I don't think was done well was the extra two miraculous they gave out I mean like I said I think uh Max and Kim they weren't strong choices for the miraculous like I said given like I said about their own characters basically if they might have not it, they would should have rather not given them their miraculous and not give anyone their miraculous and then spend more time developing Ali and Nino as their transformed selves Rina Rouge and Carapace but ultimately like I said if they plan on giving out as many miraculous as they can and they needed to give out two more miraculous because like I said like I said like him and Max they're giving them the miraculous didn't really change anything they're their one episode their one time episode and then their identities got exposed in season three so they likely won't see their own miraculous again so it was kind of like their personalities didn't change their character didn't change it was kind of just like arbitrarily giving out two miraculous at that point so but like that's why i think honestly they shouldn't have given it out but like i said if they needed to give out two more miraculous this is like where my own input comes in and who i should have think on it who i think should have gotten it instead the first candidate would be Sabrina for the reasons I've explained. I think she would be a much better candidate than either Kim or Max. And since she's definitely the strongest one. So her miraculous pick, giving her the miraculous would have been a definite for me. And then the second choice would be a toss up between Nathaniel and Julika. Nathaniel would be who I would personally want, but that's me personally. I can see Julika, him or Julika would be the only other real candidates in order to give the Miraculous to. I don't think Rose would be a candidate because if you give it to her, why not give it to Julika? And then obviously the last couple, I don't remember their names, but it's Stoneheart and the, his, the guy who transformed into Stoneheart and his girlfriend. So there's that. I could go back and look, but I'm not really going to. So ultimately they could have ended up giving out three Miraculous. They could have given out a Miraculous to Sabrina, a Miraculous out to Nathaniel, and a Miraculous out to Julika if they really wanted to. Because obviously, like I said, the first kind of, half of the season before kind of like what is it episode 15 i think with the exclusion of like oblivion miracular may maybe even like uh reflecta 2.0 with the exclusion of those episodes it's all kind of just like filler and like i said how powers they should have focused more on introducing new forms during that period of time if they needed to if they ultimately did give it up if they ultimately did give all those three their miraculous they could have kind of had one of them be introduced early on into the season and that could have fit in as they it would still it would be one more miraculous where than exist currently but ultimately those three characters i feel are ultimately more qualified to or it would ultimately better be better for them to wield a miraculous than uh max and kim so there's that so that kind of that was a long one that kind of wraps up the whole um bullet point of other kwamis and what i would have done instead like i said i think it was right on them to introduce the Miraculous and Kwamis, but I ultimately think they didn't go about doing it well for those reasons. So there's that. We're done with that. The next bullet point is actually Leibung and Chad Noir won't give out new Miraculous. I literally just went in detail on that. So I'm counting that as complete. Basically, that ties in the other Kwamis and other Miraculous in that they won't 
introduce new ones or give them out. So that was obviously a wrong prediction, but that ties in with the other one. So I'm going to ignore that. All right, so ultimately, the next bullet point is won't switch Miraculous. And you'll figure out Ladybug and Chat Noir's identity. And I know what I was talking about regarding this. And it would be, because this is going off of, um, anyway, this is what I think. That's the first part of this. So this was ultimately going off of Laybug and Chat Noir um, not giving anyone uh, new Miraculous. And basically staying with Nino, Alia, and Chloe. And basically what I said was, obviously, they won't switch Miraculous. First off, that was dead wrong. But um, what I meant was that everyone would maintain their Miraculous. They would use their own Miraculous. And then what I ultimately said also was that what could likely happen is Alia, is Alia, Nino, and Chloe, they could figure out uh, Adrian and Marinette and Adrian's secret identity. And they would kind of, Laybug and Chat Noir, it wouldn't be Laybug and Chat Noir. It'd kind of be like, like I said, the Miraculous Team of Five. They would all know each other's identity and they would all be of equal playing field. Because this also assumed that they would keep their Miraculous, which was also obviously wrong. So that's kind of what I thought would happen. No one would switch to the Miraculous. They would keep their Miraculous and they would ultimately figure out everyone's identity and they would act as a team rather than just Ladybug and Chat Noir. So, um, so yeah, that's why I predicted. What ultimately happened was not that Ladybug and Chat Noir literally swapped their Miraculous in the fourth episode of the season. So that was dead wrong. And obviously no one figured out uh, Ladybug or Chat Noir's identity, so that's kind of irrelevant. So that obviously didn't happen. So, uh, whether I think it's right, yeah, I think it was right that they didn't do that, because, like I said, that prediction kind of implies that, uh, first off, no one else is given their miraculous, is given a miraculous, and second off, uh, Alia, Cl uh, Alia, Nino, and Chloe get to keep theirs. This was on that sort of assumption, based on that assumption. So, obviously, Given the others didn't happen, this one had no, there was no point in having this one happen, I don't think. I think, and even, let's say it did happen where they didn't give out any uh, other people's Miraculous. I don't think, I'm kind of going back on what I predicted. Like, I don't think it would have been, I think they ultimately made the right choice by not having anyone figure out labeling channel wise identities. That's kind of a crucial, like, component of the show that no one figures out their identity. So... That obviously it wouldn't be it wouldn't really be a good thing. But then again, they also introduced time as a concept into the show, so that would I would say would argue was arguably a worse decision than having, let's say, the superhero team figure out everyone's identity and kind of act as a team rather than label and chat noir. So there's that. Um, yeah. So how I would have done it, obviously, that doesn't apply because this did just didn't happen. I think what happened in no one figuring out their identities was fine. I think. Them having close calls was good, especially in Kwame Buster. But I mean, yeah, obviously no one having knowing each other's identity and switching miraculous. I think that was all right. I mean, it happened for one episode. It was kind of like, it was kind of like a small plot related story related episode. It was kind of a small development episode because they also had Mayora in the episode. So it was just kind of like a little special episode. I wouldn't call it filler as, like I said, there was a little bit of development. But, I mean, there was a little bit of story plot stuff with, like, the switching of Miraculous and Mayora. Like I said, so, I mean, it was it was all right. So, yeah, there's that. All right, the next bullet point. These are kind of two uh, bullet points. Now, the um, first is Natalie's feelings for Gabriel. I'm surprised I didn't include this with other bullet points. Uh, what I predicted was that they would become more apparent. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if I predicted anything specifically would happen simply because I don't have anything written down. But, um, yeah, I think that would have been, become way more apparent. Um, yeah, and there's, there's that. Like, I think that was just, that's kind of self-explanatory. What did end up happening was obviously that. I mean, I've talked about this before. I mentioned this before in the video, but Natalie, her character, actually, no, Chloe's character wasn't done perfectly in season three, or her character wasn't done the best. Natalie's was done the best in season three, I would say. Natalie went from not being a single thought in my mind to being my favorite character in the series. That, in only 25 episodes, that's, that, it takes, like, that's, that's saying something. I mean, her character was definitely done the best out of any art character. It was done perfectly in season three with both her as herself and her as Mayora. I already talked about Mayora earlier, but ultimately, yeah, I think her feelings for Gabriel, that was also made apparent. I mean, she hasn't, like, She's alluded to it when she's talked to Gabriel. She hasn't, like, revealed it to Adrian. Granted, 
The moment where Adrian assumed that Gabriel and Natalie was a thing, that Gabe Nath was actually a thing. Obviously, Gabriel shut that down. That was quite interesting. I didn't predict anything of that sort. But yeah, Natalie's feelings for Gabriel have become more apparent, and she's obviously, she's alluded to them when she was talking with Gabriel. But it wasn't, it was sort of like, I wouldn't say a platonic sort of thing, but she she made it apparent that she really cares about Gabriel. And she kind of made that apparent in season two, the season two finale. So yeah, that's just the thing. I was, you might have actually been able to, can you hear this? I'm not sure. I'll skip to this point in the video and test. But I mean, yeah, I think that was... And I guess whether I think it was right, yes, yes. That's easily the best thing that came out of season three was Natalie, Natalie's character development. Easily the best thing. Uh, it was done extremely well. I'd say perfectly. I don't think they could have developed... I don't think they could have done it any better. I don't think they could have done anything more. I honestly think her character arc in season three is perfect. Like, they could have not done anything better, or they could have not made it any better. So that's kind of what I'm trying to say. And what, whether I would have done the same thing, I would have probably done it worse than they did. I'm keeping it completely honest here. Uh, I think I would not have done anything more. I would, if I had, could go back and change it, I'd keep it exactly as is. I would not change it. It was done perfectly. So yeah, there's that. There's there's one more, but this is the last bullet point I'm going to talk about. And this is kind of related to Natalie, Natalie's bullet point. And it's about a melee. I actually misspelled it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and that she won't be revived, and that Natalie would visit, or basically we would see the sanctuary more, and Natalie would visit it. Because ultimately we saw the sanctuary once in, oh no, we saw it twice in season two. We saw it once when it was uh, first revealed, and we saw it twice when Hawk Moth went to it during a, what was Style Queen. So um, in terms of Amelia, obviously, so that's what I predicted. Granted, I didn't necessarily predict she would be revived. I mean, I didn't think that would happen because that would require Hawk Moth to win. But, um, yeah, but I more so predicted that we would see the Sanctuary more often than that. Natalie would off also visit, kind of coming off of uh, the bullet point with Natalie. Uh, ultimately, what did end up happening was, obviously, Melee wasn't revived. We saw the Sanctuary a lot more. I think that was, that was really good. We saw, like, Hawk Moth just... We saw Gabriel casually chilling in it. We saw him picking butterflies in it. He was trapped in there, and we ultimately saw... A potential catastrophe in that when the house's power was shut off that the the machine that was uh keeping a melee comatose as opposed to laying her die uh the machine that was sustaining a melee in her current state could have potentially turned off so we now know it's like powered so that is a thing so yeah we, we did see the sanctuary a lot more ultimately natalie did not visit it so there's that that was just kind of like a yes or no thing as whether she did or whether she didn't she obviously wouldn't spend a lot of time there but just be one thing also sorry about this but uh yeah just gotta it's not an asmr video i don't have a high quality mic i have a speaker but yeah so i guess whether it was done right yeah i think it was done right it was done fairly well i, I we did see a lot more of the sanctuary so I think it's it's kind of hard to fuck that up. You just need some scenes with Gabriel in it. So, like, uh, there's that. That was done right. That was done well, obviously. Because it was something that came as a surprise out of season two. Like, we didn't even know Hawk Moth had... Uh, that Gabriel still had a melee at that point. So, there's that. So, that was kind of a big reveal. That was kind of a big surprise. It was a big, like... Kind of like the introduction of New Forms. It was kind of like... What, what was the word for it? It's kind of like a big, like, introduction that they would play off or that they would go more in detail on in season three, which they ultimately did when we saw a lot more scenes in the sanctuary. So there's that. Obviously, with Natalie visiting, uh, I mean, that's, like I said, it's a yes or no question. It's not whether they did it right by her not visiting because they just, they probably did think of it. I mean, it was more so just like, it was more so having a scene where Natalie visits the sanctuary, that could have, that could have led to some more development for her character. So if they added that, then that would have made this, like, perfect. All they really need to do was just show some more scenes with the Sanctuary. And given we've seen that they didn't showcase any more forms, it could have, they could have just completely ignored the Sanctuary as well. But, I mean, just like, um, but they didn't. So, obviously, they met the, they did what they needed to do in that they showed the Sanctuary more, uh, just... What they didn't do is they obviously didn't have Natalie visit, but it's not like that's a bad thing. It's more so it just was something that didn't happen or didn't like cross their minds or whatnot. It wasn't a thought while the season was going to development. So obviously they can't do that right or well as it didn't happen.
So I'm actually going to take a quick break now. Is that's uh, those were all of the bullet points. I'm not going to go through them all. Is basically what I'm going to do is for the next uh, two things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to re go through or the last two parts of this video. I'm going to re go through everything I think should have happened and I'll say when it happened within the season three timeline and then I'll go over what we ultimately could do for the last five the five sort of extra episodes that we need to make so yeah i mean that should take probably no more than 20 or 30 more minutes but we'll see i just need to take another break so yep it, we'll transition in like three two one should transition now all right so this is the third part of this video but well i guess it's all going to be one video like i'm adding all the parts together so it'll just just be a continuation this is kind of a long video Longer than I anticipated, but that's the usual, so, yeah. So, uh, what I need to do is I need to go over all the bullet points when, if I were to make changes, when they would apply to the timeline, and then say the developments I would have made for the five extra episodes we have. So, this should kind of finish it off. I don't anticipate this should be much longer. If you skip it this, to this point in the video, like, if you skip to the end, this is probably where you'll land, so. But, uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Um... So I had a total of, I think, 15 bullet points, but only some of them apply to the timeline. So first bullet point, Lila, I think her character is done right, done well. I wouldn't have changed any of it. Therefore, it won't apply to the current timeline. Second, Gabriel and Hawkmoth interacted with Master Fu. Like I said, that was also done right, done well. Uh, I wouldn't change anything, so therefore, no changes to the timeline. Third bullet point, Natalie Mayora, death and illness, and then... No longer assist Hawk Moth. And like I said, these are based off my Season 3 predictions. And I'm simply saying, if I were to make changes based off my Season 3 predictions, where would they apply in the timeline? Because this is mainly talking about how we could... Like, I, I made the Season 3 mistakes video. This is talking about how, like, what I would have done and what I would have done to make it better, giving, like, my own input. So, that's why I'm just basically going off my Season 3 predictions. So, Natalie and Mayora, Deathly Olsen will no longer assist Hawk Moth. I felt Natalie as Mayora was done right. It was like the care, like Mayora was done well. Ultimately, I wouldn't have made any changes, so no changes to the timeline. This is, oh wait, actually no. The, af, one more after this, but fourth bullet point is Dusu. We would see the Kwame and we'd learn the Miraculous is irreparable and that Natalie would use against Gabriel's wishes. Obviously, we saw all of that, except we did see the Miraculous Scout repaired. But I mean, even though my prediction wasn't right, I still think uh, it was ultimately Dusu and the Day of the Peacock Miraculous was done right, ultimately, given that they have plans for it in Season 4, give, like, since they repaired it. Uh, I think it was done right. I really wouldn't, I wouldn't have made any changes, so there would be no changes to the timeline. Now, this is where the first change occurs. Ladybug and Chat Noir, and that they would unlock new forms and new powers, and that, the prediction that I made, which already happened, was that Plague and Tiki would figure out their, the other's owner, but I mean, we saw that in season two. So what I think, here's where I, was, I would make changes to the timeline. I don't think it was done right. Obviously, since they didn't introduce any new forms, I don't think it was done it well at all. What I think they should have done was they should have introduced new forms. In I already, I already uh, what would you call it? I already named some, like, I think they should have introduced a fire form, like a fire flame form an air or like space form or like an electric or like magnetic form those are just three to name those are the three that i came up that came to my mind that i could come up with and where i think this would be applied because it's not right and this is would be a change i'd make to the timeline where i think these would be applied would actually be at the beginning of the timeline because like i said the first 15 episodes with the ex like all the episodes before feast pretty much with the exclusion of like maybe Miracular, Oblivio, maybe Reflecta, they're all kind of just filler episodes. So they could easily make it so during some of these episodes, Miracula like Ladybug and Chat Noir showcase new powers or their new forms. And obviously, because it's before the events of Feast, Master Fu would still be in his place of residence. So obviously they could go to him if needed. But I think ultimately that would be a change I'd make to the timeline. I would front, I would basically, during the filler episodes in the, initial half of the season before feast i would have had them showcase some new forms and like i said just the fire electric and air ones being a couple to name just a few that came to my mind so that'd be the first change i would make all right so the master food dying in phase now and passing on the mantle to marinette that ultimately happened i think it was done right it was done well because obviously master food passed on guardianship and his character arc ended when he left with lenore so 
yeah, I think that was done well and done right, so I would have made no changes to the timeline. Or because, so I would have made no changes, and because of that, there'd be no changes to the timeline. All right, the next one is ways in development with Nino, and that he'd be renounced by uh, Master Fu, so obviously that didn't happen, but it wasn't something that needed to happen, so it doesn't really apply. I wouldn't have changed the timeline. Like, I wouldn't have add this, added it, since we're kind of limited on time to begin with. So I would have, that was just something that wouldn't happen, so it wouldn't be added to the timeline. No changes. The next one, Marin and Adrian and Hone Adrianette. Obviously, that wasn't what happened, given, um, what would you call it? Uh, given the introduction of Luca and Kagami. So, I mean, because it didn't happen, it wouldn't be something, that would be something that would apply across the whole season as opposed to one specific instance. So that doesn't really apply anyway, so no changes to the timeline. The next one is the Nanakuma ties people, Marina and Adrian. This is Mendeley of Marina's parents in Chat Noir. Um, yeah, I'm gonna actually address this later in the five, what I would do for the five extra episodes. But ultimately, obviously, they were all kumatized with the exclusion of Adrian as himself. But um, yeah, so ultimately, because it happened in like various episodes, obviously nothing would have changed. Given I would have changed Adrian and Chat Noir, I would have just not made it happen. But as for the rest of them, they happened. So there would ultimately be, so ultimately, I think they did the right thing. I did that, I think they did it well for the other characters. And ultimately, the only change I would have, I would have made like no changes with the exclusion of just, like I said, not having Adrian and Chat Noir get kumatized. So excluding the fact that I w I'm not including that episode in the revised timeline. Ultimately, there would be no changes to the timeline without Shot Blanc as an episode. So, all right. Now we're getting on to the last few. Uh, other Kwamis. All right. So, other Kwamis, I've talked a lot about this in the previous video. But uh, ultimately, I don't... I think it was done right. I think it was... Or sort of other Kwamis in that they won't introduce new Kwamis and that Lei Bain Chat Noir won't give out new Miraculous... Um, obviously, neither of those happened. They did introduce new Miraculous and new Kwamis. Ultimately, I think it was right. I think it was done right. I think that was ultimately the move, uh, in terms of where to go with Season 3. I think that was ultimately the right choice, introducing new Miraculous, going against what I wanted to see or what I thought would have been in Season 3. So, yeah, I'm going against what I initially thought. It might have been exactly a year ago or something. I don't know. But they did make the right choice by introducing New Miraculous. So, uh, ult yeah, and ultimately, but going off of that, I do not think it was done well. I don't think it was done, I don't think it was very good, like, what they did. Like, I gave my reasons for it. Um, I split it up into three parts and explained it. So what I would have done instead was, first, uh, I would have had... At least one, maybe two more episodes showing Care Pace and Rena Rouge. It just feels that their time kind of got like shafted in season three. They had one episode in Miraculous, and then they were never really introduced again. They may have been brought up at certain points in the season, but we never really saw them in action again. So I think, and this would, this would kind of like I said apply, like before season. It would apply before episode fifteen first like Feast, in the first half of the season, I would include an episode besides Miracula that maybe includes uh, uh, Care Paste and Rena Rouge. Maybe we include them on their own separate episode. So there would be one episode with Care Paste and one episode in Rena, with Rena Rouge. And then ultimately in Miracula, we see them come together again, maybe having learned from the, and maybe having grown from the events of their own respective episodes. So yeah, I think that's ultimately... That's the first thing I would have done in this, how that would change the timeline would be, I would have included a separate episode for Care Paste and a separate episode for Rena Rouge early on in the season, likely before they introduce more forms. Maybe like before or after Reflecta or something, I don't know. But yeah, I would have at least introduced two episodes, one for each of them, or I would have had two of the filler episodes, one B basically be one or hold on let me rephrase that the two of the filler episodes would have been showcasing them as superheroes they would have received their miraculous and fought alongside with Laybug and Chat Noir initially separately and like I said in Miracula they come together having grown from the events of their respective episode I think that's ultimately how I would have changed the timeline 
Now the second part is actually this the second part kind of doesn't apply and this isn't the miraculous seizures they got right. And like I said, that was basically this would basically be a Kagami, Luca, and what would you call it? Uh, the revelation that Alex is Bunnix. So obviously but Alex being Bunnix doesn't really apply, but I think Luca and uh, Kagami each getting their own episode. Yeah, I think they're only really deserving of one episode, given that they already play such a big role in the show that they only really need one episode to develop their character more, given that we already see so much of them in their civilian form. So one episode was enough for each of them as opposed to Alia and Nino, who we really don't see who were part of the original five and who aren't a love interest. So they need to more development as Carapaced and Riru to kind of be on the same level as uh, Kagami and Luka with having only had one episode for their, uh, that showcased them as Miraculous users. So there's that. And obviously Axe doesn't apply, like I said. So this is the second part of our Kagami's in that they won't introduce new Kagami's and Lei Bang Chen or won't give out new Miraculous doesn't really apply. The third part though being who else could have gotten uh, Miraculous over Kim and Max. Like I said, Sabrina, strong one, number one pick. Like I said, I've already given the reasons why. The number two could have been a toss up between either Nathaniel and Julika, but I really think they could have made it both happen. Because there are reasons for why Sabrina, Nathaniel, and Julika would get a Miraculous. There isn't really a, there aren't really reasons why Max and Kim should have gotten one. That, like I said, that just seemed like an arbitrary pick. They really just needed two characters just to be more Miraculous users, given that they were introducing new Miraculous. So, like I said, I think the, I think those Miraculous should have ultimately gone to, like I said, Sabrina, and then let's, let's say we do both uh nathaniel and uh julica just for the sake of like getting rid of more filler time so ultimately like i said this would take place before episode 15 as that's kind of the turning point to this story plot half of the season so in the first half of the season during some of the filler episodes and or i guess no we could have had them replace their respective episodes so let's say let's say we even have the same miraculous all right so I think Nathaniel would have made a great snake miraculous wear. I think he's the most similar to uh I think I think he's ultimately the most similar to uh what would you call it, Luca and I think that would be perfect ultimately. I think him replacing Luca and, or no not not Luca. Oh my god, I'm I'm freaking I'm having a brain fart. Cuz Luca obviously he needs his miraculous given his place in the story we're talking about max and kim here that was a mistake on my part that's my bad ultimately i think nathaniel should have replaced prob mm -hmm. let's see uh i guess i don't know it's kind of tough because obviously it's kind of like a toss-up between the two i think nathaniel should have i guess no let's what, what am i doing skip ignore the last like three three minutes because the first the first real, what would you call it? The first real contender sh is Sabrina. So we need to look at what Sabrina can replace. I think Sabrina could have ultimately replaced, uh, you know, I think Sabrina could have replaced, I would argue, I would argue Sabrina would have replaced Max as, I don't even remember his name. Was No, I think it was literally Pegasus or something like that. I think Sabrina could have replaced Max as, Pegasus. Granted, I guess it kind of made sense that Max got it because they needed Markov in the episode, but I think they could have made sort of their way around that. They could have worked their way around that pretty much. I mean, I think they could have done the episode differently to make uh, Sabrina ultimately be the wearer of the horse miraculous, so work around the need for Markov. I actually didn't really think about that as Max having Markov. But I mean, ultimately, I think besides, ultimately, his character didn't change, which is why he ultimately didn't need the Miraculous. Like I said, it was an arbitrary pick. Ultimately, Sabrina's character, that would have interesting developments. So there's that. Ultimately, yeah, like I said, I think she should have gotten the Miraculous instead. She could have used the Horse Miraculous during that episode. So she would, effectively, the episode would be the same, but uh, Max would be replaced by Sabrina. And ultimately, because that's the earlier episode 
uh, that would ultim or that's the earlier out of her episode or that's the earlier out of the two episodes of Max and Kim receiving their miraculous. So that would allow her some potential development time with Chloe. As like I said, that would main be the main reason why you would give Sabrina a miraculous because she's so close to Chloe and that could lead to some interesting developments. Now, for the second contender, I think that would have to go to Nathaniel. And Nathaniel would ultimately replace Kim in, uh, what is it? I don't even remember the name. Or it's like, yeah, I don't even remember the name of the video. The video. But it was basically, or the episode. It was, was it Party Crasher? Yeah, I think it was Party Crasher. Uh, yeah, so ultimately Nathaniel would replace... I ultimately think Nathaniel should have replaced Kim. Granted, I'm not sure how they would have made so Master Fu would have given him the miraculous instead. I mean, or how he would have kind of avoided it. Let's just say he goes to a different room to admire the artwork in the house. And he, let's say he helped Master Fu earlier. So ultimately Master Fu, like, leaves it with him while everyone has left. And um, Nathaniel gets the miraculous. And he saves the day. He saves everyone, saves the day. So there's that. Um, so I think, like, a so kind of to recap over them, because I'm going to talk about Julika. Now, but I think uh, Sabrina should have replaced Max in Star Train, given that she, I think she should have replaced him as Pegasus wearing the horse miraculous. I think that would have done, I think that would have been better. And I ultimately think Nathaniel should have replaced Kim in a party crash. I don't even remember the name of his miraculous, but using the uh, uh, monkey miraculous. And they could have changed the personality of the monkey miraculous to match Nathaniel as well, because they haven't really showcased each like miraculous's personality before then. And same thing with like, uh, obviously Sabrina getting the, uh, horse miraculous, given the personality of the horse miraculous, but that still kind of fits. The only real change that would need to be made was the attitude or like the personality of the monkey Kwame, given that it's a lot different from Nathaniel's. But I do think that Sabrina and Nathaniel should have replaced, uh, Max and Kim in those respective episodes. Now, moving on to Julika, I think Julika warrants her own episode, like her own. I think it obviously it would have been after Reflecta, but I think she is really the one out of anyone who deserves to wield a miraculous, given that it would do wonders for her character and personality, given it it would ultimately help her character and personality evolve, as opposed to Max and Kim, whose theirs miraculous didn't really help with that at all. So I think in the first half of season one, ultimately, like I said, her character should have gotten more development. Like I said, I would put that in obviously after Reflecta, but I think she should have had her own episode where she is given the miraculous and there is ultimately, the episode is entirely focused on her as they would need to make a lot of development within 22 minutes in order to make it so that she's still a contender for a miraculous user in the future. And ultimately it would do, that would ultimately allow her character to evolve throughout season three. As her character is kind of, what would you call it, like rescinded, it's kind of, reseated in terms of what once was it seems like she's gotten more anxious like more shy more introverted throughout the series but ultimately that would be the sort of like moment where she could turn it around and ultimately focus on basically bettering herself as a person given she had the opportunity to be a miraculous where ultimately those are the arguments why i think she should have gotten it and like i said i would have placed it after reflecta sometime in the first half of season three like i said so yeah, there's that. Uh, next one is that they won't switch Miraculous to so figure out how Laybug's chat noir identity. Or this is like the next bullet point in general. I just concluded the previous one. Is That was kind of a long one. But this next point is that they won't switch Miraculous in, in general and that they'll figure out Laybug's chat noir's identity. Obviously, they did switch to Miraculous. And I think, like I said, I've mentioned this earlier, but switching the Miraculous doesn't warrant then their own episode. However, since it was also a Mayura episode, it was all right in terms of like a development point. And also, we saw Julika being akumatized. So that would also... Julika gained the Miraculous in a later episode would only reinforce the episode of Reflecta or Reflecta. So there's that. So it was ultimately all right. And then obviously, no one figured out Labeling and Chandelier's identity. So I think they did that right. I mean, that wasn't sort of like a high-priority prediction. Like, the series... The show isn't, like, hinging on whether or not that happens. So ultimately, I think they did it right. I think they did it well. And given that it wasn't just sort of an episode of them having switched the Miraculous, given that they added more in Mayor and that Julika was also akumatized again. So I think that's enough to warrant its own episode. So they did that right, did that, they did that well. And ultimately, given that no one figured out their identity, ultimately I think that was the right choice. And like I said, this would have only really applied if 
they didn't give out new Miraculous and Alia Nino and Chloe kept theirs. So because those didn't happen, this there was no real reason for this to happen, so it wouldn't apply. So they it was right and they did well not doing that and screwing it up. So ultimately, because of this, there would I wouldn't have changed the time. I wouldn't have made any changes so that the timeline would have not changed as well. So then fourth or second to last one is that is about a melee in that it would in that uh, it would go more depth into her feelings for Gabriel. Obviously that did happen. I would not have changed anything. They did that perfectly. Nothing. I would have changed nothing. That was done as good as it could be. So there's that. That's all I really have to say. And then the last one is that uh, Emelian, that she won't be revived, and that we'll visit the sanctuary, and Natalie will also visit the sanctuary. Or that we will we will see more of the sanctuary that she's held in, and that Natalie will ultimately visit her and like have a conversation with herself and Emelian. Now, obviously, we did see the sanctuary a lot more, so they fulfill on that, so there'd be no changes there. Like I said, it's kind of hard to screw that up. You just have some scenes with Gabriel in it, and you showcase it more. Especially him in it during a party crasher and the reveal that, like, there could have, it could have been potentially a catastrophe with, considering Melee didn't have the power to sort of keep her alive or keep her comatose in her, like, chamber or whatnot. So that was kind of, that was good. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of hard to screw that up. You just show more scenes with Gabriel in the sanctuary, and that obviously happened. So there's that. Um, and then, yeah, Natalie visiting, that obviously didn't happen. I mean, that was something I think should have happened, but I mean, it wasn't super high priority. So I think I think they did the first part right in that we saw the sanctuary more often, and they did that fairly well, especially with uh, Hawkmoth and Party Crasher. Ultimately, Nathan, or Natalie visiting it, that's not really high priority. So... I mean, it's not the worst that didn't happen, but I think if they did do it, they could have just plugged it into some random episode. Let's let's say we plug it into uh, Ladybug, episode 24. That'd be perfect. The Ladybug episode would be a perfect episode to put a scene of that in where Nath Natalie is talking to... Let's say Natalie's talking to uh, herself and Amelia while Gabriel's asleep, and she says that she will ultimately bring her back or something like that, despite her feelings for Gabriel, she'll do everything she can to bring Amele back. Then she takes the Miraculous, and then she creates a senti monster in Ladybug. So that would have been easy to do that. That doesn't warrant its whole episode, just a scene in another episode. So there's that. So those are going through all the predictions. Now, actually, before I get on to the... What would you call it? Uh, before I get on to what should, the 25 extra episodes... Ultimately, I'm going to go and specifically put, because uh, obviously I mentioned uh, what would end up replacing filler episodes, and I'm going to say what uh, specifically should have uh, happened instead. So, yeah, there. I mean, so basically I'll say in the what I wanted to replace filler episodes, I'll say which or when those would have occurred or which filler episodes they would have replaced and when they would have each occurred. So, that's, it's kind of hard to explain, but I'm just going to go into it. Alright, so, now, showcasing new forms. We have three new forms to introduce. So, that would replace three filler episodes. The first episode of the season's Chameleon. I don't think we won't replace that, as that's some Lila development in that episode. Um, so, yeah, we don't want to touch that. The second episode is... That one is... Animaestro, I think. Yeah, I think it's Animaestro. Um, that one, obviously, that episode was a special episode. We can't really touch that, given it's the uh, director himself in the uh, series. So we don't want to touch that. That's more focused on him and kind of like there was some subplot with Marina and Chloe going on. So we can't really touch those two episodes. The third episode is Baker Ricks. Um, that one, I don't, that episode, we could have easily given a, uh, we could have easily introduced a new form in that episode, I think. Episodes that are basically solely filler and have no other purpose. Because obviously we don't really care, like, we didn't really care about, like, first off, obviously we assumed there was like a family tree, obviously, in the Dupain Chang family or whatnot. But I mean, it was, and we saw Marinette's grandmother. But I mean, it wasn't like a necessity that we need to see her grandfather. So this is this is pretty much just a fill episode. So they could have easily had a, let's say, I think this could have showcased which which miraculous would be the best. Let's say somehow Baker Ricks also has the power of like to control heat or whatnot, because that's like baking. You use heat to bake. 
So ultimately, this could have been a good episode to showcase their fire forms. I think that'd be the most logical one. Uh, there, that, there would be that, and that would be an episode where they could introduce new forms and showcase new forms and whatnot. So they could potentially... No, I don't think they should have used episodes to... I don't think they should bring uh, Carapace or Rena Rouge in episodes where they're showcasing new forms. So there's that. I think they could have showcased a new form in that, being like the fire form or whatnot. So there's that. Episode 4, that was uh, Reflect Us, so that would go as is. I actually don't have the episodes listed, so this might actually not be the best idea. Yeah, because I don't have the episodes listed down, and I kind of don't really remember. Um, But yeah, basically, it would go the order of, it should be opposite. So you would have an episode, a filler episode, showcasing a new form. The next would maybe bring back... Uh, Alia as Rina Rouge, or Nino as Carapace. Episode after that, showcase a new form. Episode, filler episode after that, you would showcase the other. If it was Nino in the first one, then you showcase Alia. If it was Alia in the first one, then you showcase Nino as their superhero counterparts. And then you introduce the last, like, form instruction. Because I'm, those are just three forms. Three would have been more than enough, showcasing new forms, honestly. And then obviously the latter half of the season is focused more on plot and story, so that's not really, uh, that's not really necessary. But just these are just things that they could have done in the first half of the season that would just sort of enhance the season through the new forms. And obviously, Ali and Nino gain one more episode as their superhero counterparts, given they were on the original team of five and the original team fought Hawk Moth as he was transformed into Scarlet Moth during the season two finale. So there's that. Uh, you know what I mean? They could have also, and also somewhere in there, they could have thrown, uh, they could have replaced a filler episode with an episode where Julica gets a miraculous. Because like I said, Nathaniel, or Sabrina and Nathaniel replace Max and Kim with their respective miraculous. But ultimately, I would have made it so that one of the filler episodes would have been about, uh, solely about kind of Julica and about kind of like how a... Reflecto is kind of solely about Julica, but I would also make it so another episode was solely about Julica with, like, another problem. And let's say uh, something happens. She causes someone to get akumatized or someone. Have we seen... Yeah, we've seen Rose akumatized. Let's say uh, something happens where Rose gets akumatized again or whatnot. And, yeah, let's say that uh, ultimately Julica is the one that Leibu and Shinoir come to in order to fight Rose, who's now akumatized, and, like, Princess Fragrance 2.0, 2 I actually remembered her akumatized name, but, um, yeah, so there's that, ultimately, that would have been an episode more so focused on the development of Julica, but ultimately, her gain of Miraculous, and the development she goes through in the episode could lead to more things for her character later in the season, is ultimately, I think she is a better candidate than, uh, Max and Kim, and ultimately, I think, if you're, if you have to pick two out of three options, you might as well just make room for the third option, and that would be Julikon, the third person who would be, I would say, would be competitive, or, compab or, yeah, who would be competitive for two extra Miraculous to give out. So, there's that, and I think that's that's all I really need to talk about on that. If I knew the episode orders off the top of my head, I could have explained what episodes, but simply having breaks between the four episodes and Ultimately, Alia and Nino's second run as Care Paste and Rena Rouge, you would m make breaks between those. You wouldn't put all three form episodes and then Nino and Alia as their subsequent superhero identities. You would make breaks, so it'd be like form episode, uh, form episode, Nino or Alia as their superhero identities, form episode, Nino or Alia, the other as their superhero identities, form episode, maybe. Julica as maybe a Julica episode after everything considering we already had a development episode in Reflecto so I'd say that make the most sense that's where I'd put it and that would be the first half within the first 15 episodes as 15 episode 15 really marks a change in the show or the episode 15 marks a shift in like season three so ultimately you could not do it after that maybe you could fit one in but I mean, it would mainly, all of these suggestions would mainly take up filler episodes within the first 15 episodes. Like, basically, with the exclusion of, like I said, episode 1, Chameleon, episode 4, uh, Reflect, uh, episode 11, Oblivio, episode 10, I think, is Miracular. Uh, with the exception of, like, those episodes, and maybe Anna Maestro can say that was kind of a fan service episode, the director introducing, canonizing himself. So, there's that, I mean. With the exception of those, like, you can kind of 
add these to any episode to enhance the episode and ultimately one of the filler episodes would have been replaced with a Juka centered episode so there's where I would have put them all in the season if I didn't make that clear already and that I wanted to front load them in the first half of the season so there's that now the last part of this video the five extra episodes I'm not sure how long this will take we'll see but um yeah so the five extra episodes and the reason why we have five extra episodes is because which card is it in the season three mistakes video actually i don't know which card is oh yeah in the season three mistakes video i listed five episodes that i thought were mistake episodes and that they had the episodes had implications that are ultimately detrimental to the series as a whole now those five episodes like i said were episode 11 oblivio episode 15 feast episode 19 time tagger episode 22 shop Blanc, episode 23 felix so ultimately i said if I had my choice in, if I would go back and change things, I would get rid of all of these episodes. Shoplank and Felix, they have no real effect on the season as their existence as episodes is really solely for fan service. Uh, Blivio Feast and Time Tagger do, however, and I mentioned Feast a lot given I would front load all sort of the, uh, like I was literally just talking about in terms of what I could have, would have replaced filler episodes with. All the, some of the episodes, or most of the episodes before episode 15 aren't, are filler and then after episode 15 is really where the season turns to like story and plot in order to finish itself out so basically i would still get rid of those episodes though even though they have even though they actually have a place within the season as opposed to be so being solely fan service i would have still like gotten rid of them if i had to go back and change things so or if i could change things and basically make my own season so those episodes would be gone so Obviously, with those episodes gone, that leaves five more episodes that we need to make up. And like I mentioned earlier, because we would replace the filler episodes in the first half of the season with uh, all the previous things, or all the previous, uh, what would you call it, edits I would make, we don't really need to folk, we don't really need to do those during these five uh, extra episodes, as all the filler would already be taken up with extra forms Nino and Alia getting a second chance at uh, Carapace and Rena Rouge, and then Julia Kage in her own episode where she gets the Miraculous. We don't need to make extra episodes on those, as they would have already taken place during episodes that already exist. So these five extra episodes are solely for new, for new plot and new development. So it's solely for new additions. This is really where the theory craft comes in, in that this is stuff I would add, not just change or edit, but add to season three, given we made space for it. So there's kind of a quick explanation for that. And I have a few ideas. So first off, I think there should have been a mid-season, like, not a mid-season finale, but a mid-season sort of like climax. Granted, we kind of saw that in Feast, but given I am removing the mistake episodes, we would have to replace that with something. Now, I think two of these five episodes should be another Scarlet Moth encounter. I think we've seen Scarlet Moth in episode 24, Ladybug, but granted, considering he obviously didn't follow through with his plan, I think we should see Scarlet Moth before in the season, or we should see Scarlet Moth earlier in the season. And this would basically be in the middle of the season, kind of acting as like a climax. Now, obviously, there would need to be some sort of event which would... I mean, it wouldn't even necessarily need to cause Paris to go. Basically, all of Paris to kind of basically mourn. But it would be an event that would cause... Because obviously, we saw in episode 24, Marinette got expelled from school, which caused a lot of people to get upset. And he was able to akumatize a lot of them. But ultimately, let's say, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to come up with something, but basically Hawk Moth creates an event which, obviously it's not going to be the same event as the season 2 finale, but it will basically put Paris into a state of like mourning. And what it be, I don't know. It would be something that would allow that to happen. So ultimately that happens and Hawk Moth's able to akumatize everyone as Scarlet Moth. He transforms Natalie into Catalyst again and he becomes Scarlet Moth. And like I said, this would take two episodes. So the first episode would set up for the second episode. Let's say he becomes Scarlet Moth in the middle of the first episode, akumatizes everyone, and again, I mean, let's say he makes his way to the fucking... Let's say he gets back to the Eiffel Tower, and that's basically where the first episode ends off. 
And now this, because the circumstances are ultimately different, because his plan would shift and change given he failed the first time, ultimately the second episode, given that's the main battle, ultimately what that would allow them to do is, and this would actually be perfect, because that would allow Ladybug and Chat Noir to use, let's say, Alia and let's say they use Carapace and Rena Rouge, but ultimately they aren't able to use Chloe because they know how, because they saw what happened in uh, Miracular. Ult Miracular. Ultimately, Chloe, they won't be able to use Chloe. So let's say they use Julekon instead as her Miracular self, and it's them five fighting Hawk Moth. And let's say they even use new powers that they introduced that in the filler episodes of the first half of the season. Because in the season two finale, they are ultimately able to use the ice and water forms of their uh, of their miraculous or whatnot. So let's say they're able to unlock new forms to fight Hawk Moth, given that circumstances have changed for this battle. Let's say Hawk Moth, he doesn't even need to kind of just sit and wait at the Apple Tower anymore. Let's say he's actively fighting or like searching for the Guardian or whatnot. Let's say he's on the move somehow, and they've given that things have changed ultimately things will go different in this battle they use different forms like let's say they use the fire form instead let's say they use the electric form or whatnot given that they would be they would be up against the same villains that they fought that they needed those forms in which they need those forms to begin with so ultimately that'd be a good chance to show off the new forms kind of in a sort of climax ish type battle it would bring the team back it would bring Alia and Nino back as Carap or as Rina Rouge and Carapace. It would bring them back, and ultimately we could get to see Julika in action as well. Is ultimately, I think Chloe wouldn't they wouldn't give it to Chloe, and that would actually be good for Chloe's development. That would push her even further away from Laybug, seeing that Hawk Moth has come back as Scarlet Moth. It would only anger Chloe that she didn't get her miraculous. I think that would I think that would be. I think that would be done fairly well. I think that would be done well. Or, I think that would ultimately do more than what has already been done well. It would turn her really great development into excellent development on par with Natalie in terms of we could really focus on Chloe's feelings towards Ladybug and sort of the whole her situation being Queen Bee but also not being able to receive the Miraculous and Laybug not giving it to her, that would only push her further, and it would only make it more justified that she join Hawk Moth in the actual season finale. So this, this, I mean, the episode would also be good for eye candy as well, given it'd be a lot of fighting, a lot of battling, and it would also showcase new forms, like I said. So those, I feel like two of the five episodes should be dedicated to that, and it should be in sort of a season climax. I think ultimately that would be good. I think that would be... Oh, I think that would be good use of two of the five episodes. And ultimately, it makes it so that Scarlet Moth coming back later in the season in episode 24, what we may think is the finale, and ultimately him not going through with his plan because of Natalie's ailment, that would ultimately make it even more meaningful in that we've already seen Scarlet Moth during that season and the damage he's caused. So it's more, it's more relevant, or it's more so like... It's more, what would you call it? It's more, um, yeah, it's more prevalent. It's more relevant than the season two finale, which was a while ago. As we've seen, Sc seen Scarlet Moss showcased in season three and then about to be showcased again. That would really put us in a more like fearful state of mind of what could possibly happen. And ultimately, like I said, he obviously doesn't follow through and ultimately helps Natalie. But ultimately, Marina and her mother would still be akumatized. And then ultimately de-transformed or de before anything bad can happen in Marinette doing anything with her miraculous. So there's that. And like I said, that would also play off of, uh, or that's the main thing I was talking about, and that how that would play off Scarlet Moth's appearance during the climax of the season. And ultimately, yeah, I think, I really think that would be the best use of two of the five episodes. Because, I mean, obviously Marinette won't get akumatized during the first instance of Scarlet Moth, but the second episode of Scarlet Moth, f first off, Scarlet Moth twice in a season, his second encounter, like I said, more prevalent, more relevant, he's more in our minds, on top of our minds, it makes it, and ultimately, given in the show itself, it would put everyone in a more, what would you call it, in a more, 
a frightened state, in a, a more like aware state of, of his potential power as Skyrimoth. And ultimately the fact that he got Marinette akumatized would ultimately only heighten that. So it would ultimately enhance the experience of basically him as Skyrimoth and ultimately his ability to basically grant himself near unlimited power using an initial akumatized victim. So yeah, there ultimately that's all I really had to talk about for that or for those two episodes out of five. I really do think those two out of five episodes should be uh, another Scarlet Moth uh, appearance or another Scarlet Moth incident, as that would ultimately really o enhance the overall quality of the season. It would enhance multiple aspects, and it would be a really good climax in the middle of the season and not, in fact, the season finale. So there's two out of five. Now we have three out of five episodes left. Now, where I turn to for inspiration in these episodes is actually uh, qu the questions we still have video. As I made that video basically with, or it wasn't necessarily questions we have, it was the things we still don't know. Or I actually think it was questions we still have, but I mean, either way, it's the same topic. So I actually turned to that because these spare episodes or these extra episodes could be used to answer those questions, given some of the questions we uh, learned are from after season three or some of them were during the Season 3 Mistakes episodes, so obviously not going to include those, but, like, for example, the third out of the five extra episodes, I think that should be an episode that's sort of centered around how the Miraculous Kwamis and Order of the Guardians came to be, as well as Gabriel and how Gabriel and Amelie managed to obtain the Bar Flying Peacock Miraculous. Those are the first two bullet points in the Things We Still Don't Know episode. The last two are the Temple of the Miraculous and the Hawk Moth of the Future, but those don't really apply given I'm getting, I'm not, basically, I'm getting rid of them as they are mistake episodes. They will not be included in what I think is the ideal timeline. So ultimately, the first two bullet points could be talked about in one episode. In fact, there doesn't even have to be an akumatization. It could be an episode solely focused on, like, let's say Marinette goes to Master Fu sometime early on in the season before he ultimately, before he is ultimately driven underground and he's in his put he was in his place of resident residence let's see let's say he explains to her basically gives her ultimately let's say Marinette comes to him with questions about like how like how hawk moth is able to do that how he's able to use the miraculous in the ways he does and mayor and why mayor is supporting hawk moth is she never really suspects that she never really makes any assumptions about mayor she doesn't like ask why he she does what she does in supporting hawk moth so Ultimately, let's say she goes to Master Fu with those questions in the whole episode. It would kind of be like a stop and think episode or like a stop and gain our bearings episode. It could be before or after the climax. Let's say let's say it's after the climax, right after the climax. It could be right after the climax. Marinette could come with questions from the climax or basically, let's say the second appearance of Scarlet Moth that would really concern her as let's say he goes as Scarlet Moth every time. So that would be kind of the assumption she can make in the future. So let's say she goes to Master Fu with concern after the Scarlet Moth episodes. And ultimately, she brings up questions. And he basically goes into everything. Like, he talks about how the Miraculous Kwamis and Order of the Guardians came to be. That could take as short as five minutes or as long as the whole episode. Or as short as, like, a couple minutes versus, like, ten minutes, really. In reality, given the episode's 20-something minutes long. But um, ultimately, he would go into that, and that would answer one of the biggest questions in the series, whether Kwamis are natural or whether they are, like, bred. Well, obviously, they're natural, like, how Kwamis came to be and how they developed the Miraculous to harness their powers and ultimately how they tamed the Kwamis so that they could harness their powers and how the Order of the Guardian Sword came to be. I really feel that that episode can really just sort of explain all of that and answer all of that. Let's say that happens within the first half of the episode. And ultimately, it would be like, obviously, yeah, Marinette coming to Master Fu with questions about everything that happened. Let's say she ends off the episode questioning about how Hawk Moth and Mayor can use their Miraculous for those purposes. And then let's say the episode transitions into a flashback of Gabriel's. Let's say it's a flashback of how him and Amele were getting, obtained the Butterfly and Peacock Miraculous in Tibet or wherever the Temple of the Miraculous is near or wherever they found it from. It would, it would likely not only showcase that, but also showcase how Emele, like, 
what would you say, how she ultimately ended up in her current condition, either through using the peacock rancus or through a specific event that caused her to become comatose. And ultimately, that would explain sort of the second half of that episode. Because, yeah, I really think they can fit this all down into one episode. And it would be, there wouldn't even have to be an akumatization. It'd be sort of like the stop and collect your brain episodes. In fact, the end of the episode can show Hawk Moth getting ready to akumatize someone. He doesn't even need to akumatize someone. As we know, there have been people akumatized off camera. So it just needs to show him doing that. And I think that would be a really great ending to the episode. Kind of like he sort of snaps out of his flashback thinking about how everything went down. Maybe he even met Master Fu before. We'll see. Or maybe he even interacted with members of the Order of the, Order of the Guardians before. We'll see. But ultimately, I think that ultimately the ending of the episode with him sort of snapping out of his flashback and going to akumatize someone or him being brought out of his flashback by someone having emotions, his like little pendant or whatever that he sticks on his chest, that is his miraculous, would ultimately alert him. So let's say the end of the episode is that, and then he goes to akumatize someone and it ends there. I think that would be perfect. Yeah, so just wrapping up, bringing it all back. So the third, ultimately what I think the third episode could be is, it could be an episode that answers the two things we still don't know. An episode solely focused on development, solely focused on getting our bearings. The first half of the episode would be, like I said, how the Miraculous Coins and Order of the Guardians came to be, and that'd be more focused on Marinette coming to Master Fu with like questions after Scarlet Moth, and ultimately Master Fu would answer them, basically giving her the whole history of everything and answer whatever questions she already had. And she, and before she leaves, she also asks him like how Hawk Moth is able to do this and why Mayura is supporting him. Let's say he doesn't answer, and it just transitions into Gabriel having a flashback. And how he and Amelie managed to obtain the butterfly and peacock miracles. And ultimately, not only that, I feel like it could also showcase, you know, them using it if they did use it. Or basically, they could also showcase how Amelie managed to get into her current condition. Basically, how Amelie ended up comatose. Whether it was a specific event or whether it was through her using the peacock miracles. How the peacock miracles got damaged to begin with and then her subsequently using it. Ultimately, I feel like that would explain those two parts. And then ultimately... It, the episode ends with Gabriel sort of like snapping out of his flashback through being alerted that someone is feeling bad in Paris. Who would know? A whole city, one person feeling bad. But ultimately, then he goes to his lair and the episode ends with him about to akumatize someone. Doesn't show how, just so it's like the window opening up and then episode ends there. I really think that would be good. I really think that would sort of be... I really think that would be something they should have done. Or that's something I would do if I could go back and change things change things with five extra episodes one of them would be solely dedicated to answering the questions we still don't have and obviously like i said the temple of the miraculous and hawk moth of the future those wouldn't be relevant given i've already removed those episodes as i've deemed them mistake episodes so there's that um so that would be what episode three out of five would be um i mean that's pretty much like all i really have to say about that the first two episodes they would be a Scarlet Mall's second appearance during the climax of the season. Let's say it's a bit earlier. Let's say it's at, like, episode uh, 12 or 13, right after Miracula, like, or a couple or few episodes after Miracula. Let's say that's Hawk Moth's plan. He wants to become Scarlet Moth right after Chloe got rejected, yet again, or right after she lost her Miraculous permanently. So ultimately that he transforms into Scarlet Moth, and ultimately that angers Chloe, and everything goes down within that two-episode climax of the season. And then ultimately, yeah, I've already explained in detail earlier in the video why I think that would be good and why it overall benefit the season and why it would basically be, it would probably be the ideal thing to do with extra episodes. So just go back in the video if you skip to this part and are wondering why I think Scott Moth should have a second appearance, or I guess it would be second out of three appearances, or having an appearance in the climax of season three, then go back when uh, I talk about that. But and then obviously the third out of five episodes I just went over and it'd be basically answering everything we still don't know. It would be a development episode. No one would be akumatized. It would end with someone about to get akumatized, but it doesn't show that as the episode ended. It would be a sort of like stop gain our bearings episode and that would be after the Scar I feel like the perfect place that would be after the climax of Scar Moth. I feel that would ultimately be the best place for it. Like I said, Scar Moth, probably the best thing that could have happened to the season if I had to add something. It would overall enhance the quality of the season. It would only add to reasons why Chloe joined Hawk Moth. It would ultimately only enhance Scarlet Moth's second supposed appearance in episode season twenty or in episode twenty four of season three, which is the episode literally Ladybug. 
and ultimately it would allow us a chance for Leibung Shanhua to showcase new forms they could have sh introduced earlier in the season. Ultimately, it would allow, given that Julika received her Miraculous before that episode, they could have ultimately showcased her as transformed into her as a Miraculous user in the episode. So ultimately, yeah, I think that's probably the best thing they could have done. So those are, but yeah, like I said, back to the sort of, uh, back to the sort of episode that in that con what would what would the word be that confronts or that sort of uh, answers the questions we still don't know ultimately yeah that episode would be best right after Scarlet Moth during the climax of the season and that would ultimately answer all the questions we have it would be a stop gain our bearings episode it would be a nice sort of split between the first half of the season and the second half so yeah with the first half being more sort of story focused like introducing new forms using Nino and Ali again as uh as their transformed selves in Care Paste and uh, Rina Rouge, and ultimately introducing Julika as a miraculous user, and ultimately showcasing her as well in the finale. That would ultimately be more story focused, with the latter half of the season being more plot focused and sort of driving Chloe to join Hawk Moth. Obviously, there's a lot of Julika, uh, Luca moment, or not Julika, a lot of Kagami and Luca moments during those episodes, and ultimately just a lot of Mayor moments. It was a lot more plot centered, and obviously the finale. So, yeah, so those will be three of the five. Now, the last two, they're kind of like toss-up episodes. Those are kind of like extra episodes that I don't really have any specific plans for. What I think should happen is, ultimately, if those episodes were to be used, like I said, they would showcase a new form or showcase another person maybe as a miraculous user let's say one of those episodes is used to specifically showcase another form let's say we already had water ice and i've already said we would use the like fire electric and air forms in filler episodes in the first half of the season but let's say we introduce a new form let's say we introduce like an earth form or something or like those would be used for like a more development like, it would either showcase a new form, showcase an instance where Ladybug and Chat Noir ultimately go to someone to give their Miraculous. Let's say they ultimately have another episode like Miracular, where instead of having to go to Alia, or instead of having to go to Alia, Nino, and Chloe, so uh, Carapace, or Rina Rouge, Carapace, and Queen Bee for their help, is that sort of bring back the, brings back the original team of five versus... Uh, Miracular and uh, what would you call it um, versus Miracular and uh, Mayora. So that kind of is an episode that's dedicated to bringing back the original team of five. And ultimately they wouldn't use Julika there as that kind of ruins the team of five. But um, yeah, it's an episode dedicated to bringing back the team of five. Let's say one of the two extra spare episodes is used near the end of the season to bring back the rest of the, uh, or I guess that's already kind of done in Party Crasher. So we don't really need to do that actually. But yeah, basically these last two episodes I have no plans for. They would be used to showcase, like I said, new forms. Maybe even, yeah, I wouldn't actually use them to showcase new Miraculous users. Is we already have an instance early on in the season through a filler episode, an instance where Ali and Nino each get their respective Miraculous and transform into Rina Roos and Carapace in their own sort of in their own episode f centered around them. And then we get them back together in Miracula, which is ep in episode 10, Miracula. And then we would get them back again in the mi mid-season climax of Scarlet Moth. So they don't need like their own, uh, what do you call it? They don't need another episode focused on their, uh, they don't need an episode, another episode for their Miraculous. Julika, obviously she would be introduced in her own episode which would replace a filler episode which would be solely about her which isn't a uh, reflecto 2.0 it would showcase her potentially rose getting akumatized again and ultimately her being chosen by Laybug and chat noir fly alongside them with her miraculous and that would ultimately do wonders for her character in terms of development and then she would come back during the mid-season climax of scarlet moth again and obviously we're not bringing chloe back because that would only that would only uh that would only anger Chloe or whatnot, or it would only give Chloe more reason to join Hawk Moth in the season finale. So ultimately, we wouldn't bring her back for Scarlet Moth, but instead replace her effectively, or as that's how Chloe would see it, with Julika transformed into another Miraculous. I don't know which Miraculous. Obviously, there could be new ones introduced in season four that could have been 
for her, but I mean, we'll see. So, and then, so ultimately, I think those two episodes could be used to showcase new forms. Like, this season could have been some, this season could have done wonders with forms, and then obviously we didn't even see it until the end, and that was a form we already saw, the wire form. So I think these two episodes could either be used for more filler, or could have been used for forms. I don't really have anything else I wish to see in the series. I mean, like, there's really nothing else, pretty much. I mean, I've got, they did pretty much, besides the forms thing, besides who they gave the Miraculous to, and besides the mistake episodes, those are the three big things that I would change. But besides those, there's really nothing else. So they already showcased, showcased enough new Miraculous. And in replacing filler episodes early on with new forms and Miraculous users coming back, we wouldn't really need to use those. We could obviously just use them as filler, showcase new forms. But ultimately, yeah, they wouldn't be used for like showcasing Miraculous. Like I said, it would mainly be used for new forms, ultimately. Uh, I don't really see anything else it could be used for. And if it's not, just make it more filler. I mean, ultimately, because the mistake episodes, I think, are ultimately just... I I would definitely, like, get rid of them. I would remove them. Definitely. I mean, like, Felix, obviously fan service. Chat Blanc, obviously fan, fan service. I think they're trying to go somewhere with Time Tagger, but, I mean, there really is no point in the revelation that Hawk Moth of the present isn't the Hawk Moth of the future, unless they plan on taking the series into the future. Other than that, there's no real point for that revelation to have happened. It, is, it doesn't really affect the present, current timeline. It obviously didn't affect Gabriel's actions, so it really has no effect. Um, Oblivio, I think they're trying to go somewhere with that. Maybe we could leave Oblivio in. I say if there's one episode we could leave in, that would be Oblivio. I mean, that could be one of the last two episodes, given that we don't really know what to do with those. We could have had an episode... We could have only had four uh, extra episodes. Leave Oblivio in, uh, and then the last episode, the last extra episode showcases a new form. Because obviously, still, here's the thing, still. Feast and um, Feast and Time Tiger, ultimately, I still think those are mistake episodes. I would have ultimately not used those. I mean, I would have ultimately gone rid of those as... Uh, episodes i wouldn't have kept them in the series but let's say we keep oblivio that leaves four extra episodes two of the extra episodes are uh scarlet moth uh one of them is an episode that sort of answers all the questions we have about miraculous quines and how the order of the guardians came to be and how gabriel Maley managed to obtain the butterfly and peacock miraculous and how Maley reached her current condition that can answer all those questions and then this last episode could simply be extra filler if we need it or showcase a new form if we don't i mean ultimately we want to try and have as little filler as possible and do as much as we can, given that we saw no real form, new forms be introduced and ultimately no real, like, uh, no more, no real showcasing of previous Miraculous users or no, it didn't really feel like they were showcased that much. So ultimately, that's what you would use the filler for. So if you needed, if let's say we needed to add more filler, that would be an extra episode. And if we need two, that would be two. Just get rid of Oblivio, replace Oblivio. <sighs> But yeah, ultimately, I mean, that's really all I've got. I mean, this was a long video. I broke it up into three parts. I mean, I'm just going to do a brief run through over it. This video specifically, let's say you skip to the very end and you skip till here. Uh, this video is season three, how it should have been in things that I would have done, like going back and adding the season. First thing I did was I went through all my season three predictions, explaining whether it would be applicable to change the timeline is some of them are and some of them aren't as this video is very related to season three predictions and the season three mistakes episode this is kind of the culmination of many of my previous videos the second thing i did is went back through and specifically said like how in the timeline i would apply the season three predictions if i were to apply them as the first time i went through all of them explained them and then said that i would ultimately apply them in the timeline and then i went through all of them again the ones that I would apply in the timeline and say where. And I said I would apply them in the first half of the season, basically replacing filler episodes. Ultimately, episodes showcasing forms, episodes showcasing previous Miraculous users, mainly in Ali and Nino as Rina Rouge and Carapace, and ultimately an episode showcasing uh, Julica, an episode showcasing Julica, replacing one of the other filler episodes, the development of her, and ultimately Rhodes potentially getting Kumitized again, and her being chosen by Leibling and Chandelier as a Miraculous user. So ultimately, all of the... 
all of the basically all of the changes I would make would mainly be within the first half of the season. It would mainly be within before episode fifteen piece. And then I also explained, uh, and then the last thing I explained was ultimately. Well, the very first thing I explained, which I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, was the season three mistakes, and that basically I would ultimately get rid of them. I would get rid of the episodes as they all are detriment. I feel all of an implication that's detrimental to the show itself. So, going back, like I said, given that I've replaced all of them, I explained what I would do to take up the extra space. So that's five episodes we need to come up with. Uh, for two of the episodes, I said we would have a climax in the season as Scott Moth. And that would overall enhance the quality of the season as it would make Scott Moss' appearance right before the finale much more, much more uh, relevant and much more, what would you call it, like apparent. Uh, I said Scott Moss would allow us to showcase the previous uh, Miraculous users in Alia and Nino as Rouge and Carapace. And ultimately Julica again as her Miraculous, uh, as her Miraculous, uh, ident or as her transformed identity and ultimately showcase new forms as well that we also introduced would have introduced earlier in the season which would have uh, been applied to filler episodes like i said earlier but um and ultimately that would also do that would ultimately make it more uh that would also ultimately make it more uh what would you call it or it would give more reason as to why chloe joined hogmoth and that ultimately she saw herself as being replaced by julica as her miraculous sort of a user like identity or whatnot so that would ultimately i feel like it overall enhance the quality of the season having a climax with scar moth uh then the next thing is i said immediately uh following that episode we would have an episode that sort of answers all the questions let's say it would make sense why the episode would happen marinette would go to master food basically asking about scar moth or whatnot or basically she would ask about things involved in the miraculous as she would be scared considering she could think she could just think that scott hawk moth could transform into scar moth like any day now that he's done it twice so she would come to Master Fu with questions, and Master Fu would answer the questions and then ultimately explain sort of everything about the Miraculous Kwamis in Order of the Guardians and how it came to be. And then the second half of that episode could ultimately be Gabriel reflecting on his second, uh, on his second, uh, what would you call it, you appearance as Scarlet Moth. And then ultimately he would ultimately end up sort of drift into, it would drift into a flashback about uh, him and Amele obtaining the Barfly and Peacock Miraculous, and ultimately how the Peacock Miraculous got damaged, and how Amele ended up in her current state as sort of being comatose and not really within the season. So I feel like that would be a good episode for that. There wouldn't even be an akumatization. The episode would end with a cut to sort of Gabriel coming out of his flashback, or coming back to his senses when his sort of like little pendant or whatnot, his Miraculous alerts him that there's someone who's who's basically, who could get akumatized. And then ultimately that show ends with basically, the, I think the butterfly window panel opening. I think that'd be the best ending to the show. Opening instead of closing, as it normally does close. But and then, yeah, those would be three of the five season, uh, three of the five extra episodes. And then for the last two, I ultimately said those could simply be used as filler episodes or still be used to showcase new forms if we need to. Ultimately, what I said was, if there's one of the season mistake episodes that, or if there's one of the mistake episodes that doesn't need to be gotten rid of, it's Oblivio. I think Feast and Time Tagger need to be gotten rid of. And then also clearly Shop Lunker Felix, which is fan service. So if there's no extra episodes needed, then we could k potentially keep Oblivio in and use the last episode as filler to showcase new form, basically, because that's what they would be used for. But ultimately, if we need more filler, we could just declare Oblivio as a season mistake episode or as a mistake episode and ultimately use both of the uh, two extra episodes to showcase new forms and be used as filler or whatnot in the in first half of the season is that's ultimately where most of the changes would be made is the second half of the season is mostly development like plot related the first half of the season is mainly story related with filler in between so there's that um yeah it's kind of a brief run through of everything um that's the end of this video I have one more video that I want to record, one more Miraculous Ladybug video, one more video that I want to record for uh, Winter Break or whatnot, and that is the, that is the Miraculous Ladybug themes, and also sort of explain, uh, it, it would be a video explanation on the easiest, it would also, yeah, like I said, Miraculous Ladybug themes, that'd be the main part, and then ultimately how Ladybug and Chat Noir can figure out each other's identities, or the easiest way they could uh, figure out each other's identities within the season as obviously it won't happen and obviously looking onward we know 
but I mean within the show itself, looking at how the e or how they could discover each other's identities the easiest way they can, even though we ultimately know they won't. So that's for the last episode, or that's for the last uh, recording. But I mean, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much it for this recording. This one went on a decent amount. This is probably my longest. Well, no, it's actually yeah, this is my longest video yet. I'm pretty sure. So I guess. That's that. Once all these parts are edited together, I think it's close to 2 hours, 30 minutes, maybe like 2 hours, 45 minutes. But I mean, it was worth it. This was like the culmination of multiple episodes. This was the culmination of my season mistake episodes. This was the culmination of my season 3 predictions episodes. Uh, this was the culmination of my things we still don't know episodes. Or, or recordings, not recordings. So, and then yeah, this was the culmination. It even had some influence from my season 4 predictions or whatnot. But yeah. This, I mean, pretty much, yeah, that's all I really have to say. Uh, I mean, it was it was also a culmination of my things we still don't know episode. I'm pretty sure I actually mentioned that, but I mean, yeah, I'm going to end it here. Basically, this was what nearly all the recordings for this break were leading to. Ultimately, just ending it off on this note, if you skip to the very end, basically, if I were to do season three, how I would do it. If I could go back and edit it, what I would ultimately do. So yeah, this and my season four and five predictions are my main videos, clearly. But I mean, this really was sort of the culmination of my previous videos. So, yep, I mean, it's really all I've got. I've got nothing else. I'm gonna add these videos together. I'm gonna upload them. I mean, yeah, gonna use uh, gonna use some sort of background. Is obviously it's just if not, it'd be a black screen. But yeah, so I mean, yep. Yeah, I guess that's really it for today. Uh, tomorrow it is then.